Episode 281, Saved Again. Caitlin felt a little embarrassed when she saw Luis, as she wasn't wearing much. He immediately approached the runway, removed his jacket, and placed it on her shoulders when he saw her blush. The show director asked, Who are you? as he started leading her off the stage. Luis, Kaleidoscope's artist director, he replied coldly. The man was taken aback for a moment before he said, She can't leave yet. She still has a job to do. It would be a breach of our contract. Contract? Luis turned to Caitlin's manager, Trina, and ordered, Bring me the contract. Trina wiped her tears and immediately handed the contract to him. He casually flipped through the contract and scanned the terms, circling a few key points with his pen before lifting the contract and waving it at the director. Did you even read this? The show director scoffed. Since the man refused to acknowledge him, he turned to the bodyguards and said, Seize him. What? You can't be serious. The show director's expression grew fearful. Two of the bodyguards stepped forward and grabbed hold of the show director and forced him to stand in front of Luis. That is illegal. I can sue you, the show director said, though fear still flashed in his eyes. For what? I simply had them bring you closer so you could read the actual terms of Caitlin's contract better. Luis held the contract right in front of his face, eyes cold and piercing. We can and will make Ivy's lingerie shares plummet overnight if you continue to choose the wrong side and harass our models. If your boss continues to team up with Star King, he will face the consequences. Let this be a warning. He threw the contract in his face, wrapped an arm around Caitlin's shoulders, and led her out of the room. He helped her into his car, grabbed a blanket from the back seat, and placed it around her shoulders before getting into the driver's seat. I'm sorry you were hurt, he said. I never thought Ivy's people would stoop so low or blatantly disrespect me and kaleidoscope she murmured he glanced at her in the rearview mirror as he started the car and headed for her house ivy used to be in the adult entertainment industry before they started selling high-class lingerie traces of their past still exist which is why i asked you to reconsider the job when they offered it to you i suspect their treatment of you was their way of trying to climb the business ladder you totally embarrassed the director in there. What are we going to do? She asked worriedly. No one's hands are clean in this industry, he said. Everyone's out for money and power, and most will do anything to get it. Eric deals with things like this all the time. Don't worry about it. Have you handled Emma's photo yet? We're working on it, he said as he pulled up to her house. We're here. Hurry and head upstairs before someone sees you. It's freezing out. She looked around and started to hand him his jacket back, but he placed his hand on hers to stop her. Keep it. I don't want you walking out there like that. You think it's sick. He was right. The only thing she had on was a set of white lingerie. It might have been a short walk, but knowing her luck, she would get sick and end up in the news again. If you want, I can go up and grab a set of clothes for you, he offered. She hesitated before saying, I think I'll go to Trina's place. I'm still a little nervous. She was still scared of Ivy's potential revenge, despite his assurances. Hiding out at Trina's place wouldn't make much of a difference if Ivy actually sought revenge, he told her. Then take me to a hotel. Why don't you come to my place? Are you sure? Yes. Besides, it's only one night. 
He restarted the car and headed towards his place. My daughter is really well behaved. You can either stay with her and keep her company or sleep in the guest room. She hadn't had a chance to analyze her love life after their last talk, but his actions today made her realize just how much he'd been helping her lately. He was always there for her when she needed him. Deep in thought, she didn't notice when they got to his house. When she walked through the front door, the first person she saw was Luis's daughter, Maria, who was drawing with the help of her nanny. Precious, come here, Luis said, waving Maria over. The little girl quickly bounced into his arms and snuggled against his chest as he introduced them. This is Miss Roberts. You can call me Caitlin, she said. Maria scratched her head and said in a cute little voice, Papa, she's pretty. Yes, she is, he said as he gently patted her on the head and then led Caitlin into the guest room. He headed to his room for a few minutes and brought back a change of clothes. I need to get back to the office. Make yourself at home. Are you and Eric going to deal with the Ivy issue? She asked as she took the clothes from him. Yes. After he left, she got dressed, returned to the living room, and leaned against the wall. A few minutes later, she called Helena and asked, Can you come pick me up? I'm at Luis's house, but I think it would be better if I stayed in a hotel. Maria overheard her and immediately got up and ran over, tugging at her pants. Caitlin, don't go. After Nana leaves, I won't have anyone to play with. Caitlin was stunned as the nanny explained. Luis and I are the only constants she has, and we can't be here all the time. She doesn't get the chance to play with or meet new people very often. Caitlin thought back to how lonely she'd been when she was with Chris. They might have been different circumstances, but she understood how Maria felt. Turning to the nanny, she said, You can leave. I'll take care of her. Eric was sitting in the airport's private departure lounge. Emma leaned against his shoulder while he typed away on his laptop. Luke showed him the information he had collected. After looking it over, he forwarded it to Luis with a message, Release this information tonight. Emma glanced at the information on the screen. How did you get your hands on all this stuff about Ivy? I had some help. My youngest cousin is an Interpol officer who's been trying to find evidence to bring down Ivy's boss. We're working together, he explained. Your family is amazing. A moment ago, Luis mentioned that the people from her vision have gone missing, he said. They're probably out trying to capture another photo of me, she said. They probably think I'm on a date with yet another man. Episode 282 Full Scale Destruction Don't worry, I'll happily be your fourth, fifth, and even sixth man. Eric ran his hand through Emma's hair and placed a kiss on her forehead. In the meantime, focus on your meeting with Claude and do your best to secure the endorsement. Leave the rest to me. You always have so much faith in me. By the way, will your Uncle John see the photo? I don't want him to have a negative opinion of me. She was constantly worrying about his family's opinion of her. Don't worry. Uncle John would just blame me for not taking good care of you. She snuggled up to him, glad she had a husband who treasured her, whom she could trust and rely on. You make me stronger. As long as you're by my side, I'll be fine, 
she told him, smiling. Your status in New York is relatively stable, but I think you should spend more time interacting with your fans. Thanks to the incident with this photo, your fans really are worried about you. I think we should walk through the airport instead of staying in VIP so that they can see that you're okay. I owe my fans everything. Without them, I wouldn't be where I am today, she said. Thanks, hubby. That's a great idea. Right now, I'm your manager. Your husband won't be here until 8 p.m., he teased. She let out a laugh in response. A while later, wearing sunglasses, they walked down the short hallway toward their gate. Multiple fans immediately spotted them, and while some simply stared, others asked for autographs and photos. Eric's presence kept them in line, while Emma signed autographs and tried her best to get to everyone. Her fans asked questions as she signed and posed for selfies. Emma! Were you really kissing someone in that picture? Was it? Really have three boyfriends? Laughing, she gestured at Eric and asked, Do you really think this man would allow me to have three boyfriends? A few of the fans glanced at Eric and smiled at him awkwardly. One said, I knew it was fake. No one could compare to Eric. You have good taste she praised as Eric guided her through the gate. Plenty of fans captured the loving scene at the airport and felt that the Emma they'd met that day was different. She'd worn her signature sunglasses and walked with a purpose, as usual. But this time, she'd smiled instead of answering their questions in a cold, aloof tone. They wondered if Eric was responsible for the change. Later that day, an entertainment news clip on the television caught several people's eye. Welcome, everyone, to another episode of Full Access Entertainment. Today, we'll be discussing Emma, who, dare we say, is the most famous model in the industry right now. Her gorgeous legs and professionalism capture everyone's attention every time she steps on the runway. However... A recent photo has been released online of her kissing a man, along with a comment suggesting she could be seeing more than one. Emma has worked hard for the success she has today, so it's a bold move trying to undermine everything she's achieved. Case in point, some witnesses have reported seeing her boarding a flight to France, and rumor has it she's meeting with Claude. It doesn't seem like she's been affected by that photo's release at all. Emma had become a regular news topic, and by creating a scene at the airport, she had announced her schedule to anyone who may have wanted to follow her. Both Henry and Kyle immediately booked the next flight to France, hoping to dig up some dirt on Emma. Henry had even found an expert photo editor, and had them change Eric's body to his before re-releasing the photo. He couldn't compete with Eric head-on, and knew hurting Emma was the best way to get him. He wondered how many people would believe her now. Luis was a little worried about how Caitlin and Maria were getting along, so he decided to leave the office early and bring his work home. Unlocking the front door, he walked in and saw Caitlin holding Maria as they slept on the sofa. His heart melting, he knelt down by the sofa and watched them silently for a few minutes before grabbing a blanket from his room and draping it over them. He smiled down at them and headed into his study. Time quickly flew by as he sat in front of the computer, plotting his revenge on Caitlin's behalf. He released a piece of news about Ivy every hour, and each fact was more shocking than the last. By 3 a.m., one of the most popular sites had crashed due to excessive activity. Scandals of Ivy 
Number one, did Ivy actually stop providing special services? Undercover reporter reveals all. Scandals of Ivy, number two. Model drowned at sea after refusing to appear on the runway. Scandals of Ivy, number three. Ivy summoned by police multiple times, but never charged. Crimes covered up by criminal connection. After staying up all night, Luis finally went to bed. A few minutes later, Caitlin's manager called and woke her up. Caitlin, go online and check out the news. The internet's exploding. Caitlin hung up and immediately logged on to one of the most popular news sites. She saw all the articles that had been posted overnight, and the latest news bulletin said that Ivy's CEO had been summoned by the police. Eric and Luis had destroyed an entire company in one night, along with the criminals associated with them. She had always handled things on her own, and had never had support like this before meeting and befriending Emma. She'd never been able to count on anyone, especially a man. But Luis was proving that she could. Episode 283 Re-evaluating Relationship Caitlin was filled with joy as she ran over to Luis's study and knocked on the door. A few minutes later, Luis tiredly opened his bedroom door on the opposite side of the hallway. I'm over here. I know you said you could destroy Ivy in a day, but can't believe you actually did it, she said. Luis yawned. Is that why you were looking for me? It was all Eric's doing. Eric and Emma are on their way to France. I saw the news last night. Eric may have helped, but you were the one who got the ball rolling, she insisted. He nodded and turned to go back to bed. He was too tired to talk. Would you mind making breakfast for my daughter? I was up all night and I'm exhausted. Lock the door when you leave, please. She lowered her head and stared at her feet for a second before asking, Why were you so hell-bent on destroying Ivy this time? Eric ordered me to, he replied as he got in bed and closed his eyes. Caitlin stood just inside his bedroom door. It didn't have anything to do with me. Luis was silent for so long that Caitlin thought he wouldn't answer, and she turned to leave. He suddenly said, What do you want me to say? I don't think you want the truth. What's that supposed to mean? If you mean you're doing this out of pity, then don't bother. I can take care of myself. She started to leave, but Louise sat up, completely awake, and stopped her. You wasted over a decade of your life with Chris. All you've talked about lately is having a family of your own. I already have a daughter. Would you be happy raising someone else's child? What if people start ridiculing you and claiming you can't have kids? He asked. I thought you were disgusted by my past, she said, surprised. I thought you didn't want to be saddled with all my baggage. As for kids, I've already had three miscarriages. I probably can't have kids. Luis got up, closed the door, and gestured for her to sit next to him on the bed. I think it's time we put all our cards on the table. You really don't care that I have a daughter? When she shook her head, he took a deep breath and told her something very few people know. Maria is actually my younger brother's daughter. I did have a girlfriend, but she died a few years ago. My brother made a mistake when he was still in high school and wasn't ready to be a father. When Maria was born, I took her in and treated her as my own. 
She may not be mine biologically, but she's still my daughter. And whoever I end up with needs to be willing to protect her, too. I refuse to let the truth get out. I see where you're coming from, she said, happy that he was opening up to her. You're a good man who deserves someone without baggage of her own. I never thought less of you, and after everything I've been through, public ridicule doesn't scare me in the slightest. She laughed softly. We're not Emma and Eric. I'm not as smart as she is, and you're not a master strategist with a plan for everything. We're not a perfect match like they are. But I'm willing to give us a try if you promise not to give up on me. Despite my past, I've still got love to give, and you've already proven that you never intentionally hurt me. Luis wrapped his arms around her and hugged her tightly. Her strength was the most amazing thing about her. What about your parents? Do they know about Maria? They cut off all ties with me once they found out I had an illegitimate daughter. Clearly, Louise had always been a protector. She knew losing his parents must have been hard, but he had endured it rather than tell them the truth. She vowed right then and there to always stand by his side, no matter what happened. Emma fell asleep as soon as they got to their hotel in France. So when Caitlin called to share her news about her and Louise, Eric was the one who answered. Caitlin, what is it? Eric, where's Emma? She asked. Sleeping. Do you want to leave a message? I can pass it on when she wakes up, he said. There was no way she could talk about this with him. So she told him she would call back and hung up. Eric looked at the woman in his arms while he called and spoke to Claude for a few minutes. Not long after, Luis called him with an update about her vision. Sir, we searched through her vision's base of operations, but barely found any evidence. We did find the photo of Emma, so that proves they leaked it, but they've clearly moved on to a new location. I don't care how well they're hidden, find them, he replied. He continued, they probably followed us to France, so this is the perfect time to do some digging. I don't think the photo's release was intentional. Otherwise, they wouldn't have kept it hidden for so long. It's probably why they moved, Louise surmised. Luke and I will keep looking for information on Hervision's CEO. Hopefully, he won't cause us any more trouble. Even if he does, their small studio won't be difficult to manage. Maybe we can turn things around and use it to our advantage, Eric said. What do you mean? Let's play along with their plans and see how many people are involved. When the time is right... We'll take them down all at once. I think we should sit back and see what else they have up their sleeves. Eric wasn't worried. He and Emma were married, and he had the evidence to refute any claims her vision made. And if that wasn't enough, he had one more piece of information he could use against them. Episode 284, A Little TLC Since Luis and Caitlin had officially become a couple, she now had a valid reason for staying at his house. After breakfast, she and Maria played with building blocks in the living room. Luis walked into the room after he finished walking up and asked, Aren't you going to get changed? She didn't look up or stop playing as she answered, I'll leave tonight. I'll probably end up surrounded by reporters again if I leave now. 
A small smile played over Luisa's face as he realized that she was using potential reporters as an excuse to spend more time with his daughter. You know, today's my day off. She looked up, eyes twinkling, before they dimmed. She wanted to spend more time with him and develop their relationship further, but they weren't out of the woods yet and she didn't want to cause trouble for him. Luis, reading her mind, said, Once her nanny gets here, come to my study. What do you want to do? she asked. Do you still want to take on jobs like Ivy? You're an international supermodel, but this latest incident probably impacted your value, something Trina will be held accountable for. It's not her fault said Caitlin. I rushed into this and didn't research them before I took their offer because I wanted to escape life for a little while and focus on work. It doesn't matter. As your manager, it's her responsibility to make sure you're protected and taken care of. I might be your boyfriend now, but I'm still the PR director and this whole thing could have been avoided. I won't let you be hurt again, he said, not backing down. She blushed, her heart racing at his response. She hadn't felt like this in a long time. It was a beautiful feeling. If they'd continued dancing around each other, she could have missed out on the flood of happiness coursing through her. Okay, I'll keep Maria company for a little while. Go eat breakfast, she said. Luis nodded and headed back to his study with a glass of milk. He sat down at his desk and went back to collating the information he'd gathered about her vision. Recalling Eric's assumption that they had most likely followed them to France, he contacted some friends at the airport and had them run a search for all of her vision's employees. They discovered a man named Kyle had gotten on a flight to France not long after Emma and Eric left. Louis sent a message to Eric and Emma with his picture. Emma had seen him the most and would be able to identify him. Eric called Louis and said that Emma had confirmed it was Kyle. You'll never guess who was on the flight with him. It doesn't look like they're working together, but I find it very interesting. He paused for a few seconds and then continued, Charlene and Henry. Emma knew Eric hadn't gotten any rest since they arrived. So while he was on the phone, she ran a bath and had room service prepare some food for them. Louise? I want you to take care of things in New York. Luke is going to fly out and help us out here, Eric said. Ten minutes later, he turned off his computer, and Emma handed him a bathrobe. Go soak in the bath and relax. Food will be here when you're done. He rubbed the back of his neck as he tilted his head and asked, You're not joining me? I already had one earlier, she said. Good, then you can help me. He grabbed her hand and dragged her into the bathroom with him. The bathroom was warm and covered in a layer of steam. Eric took off his clothes and got into the tub, while Emma grabbed one of the bottles of essential oil provided by the hotel and sat on the edge of the tub. She gently massaged his neck and shoulders. Better? she asked a few minutes later. When he didn't answer, she looked down and saw that he had fallen asleep. She let him sleep as she continued kneading the knots in his neck and shoulders. Twenty minutes later, once the water had cooled, she gently woke him up and said, Go lie down in bed. She handed him a towel when he got out of the tub. Seeing he was still half asleep, she took the towel back from him, leaned him against the counter, and stood between his thighs as she dried him off. He suddenly pressed his lips against hers. 
She pulled back, giggling. You're exhausted. I'm surprised you have the energy to fool around. Do you doubt my stamina, wifey? Without waiting for a response, he grabbed her slim waist and removed her robe. Eric, you need to get some sleep, she protested half-heartedly. I'll sleep later, he said, pulling her toward the bed. A few hours later, as they were dozing off, Eric said, I need to talk to a French director about an upcoming movie tomorrow. I want you to come with me. She smiled tiredly and nodded her head. He might have been her manager, but he was also the CEO of Kaleidoscope, and he always found ways to optimize their time and fit in some business opportunities. The meeting with Claude is in two days, so I'll deal with some other business first. I planned on letting you get some rest, but the French director's wife is a supermodel who's currently in the U.S., and he's taking care of their two-year-old daughter. He can't leave her, so I thought you could come and watch her for a bit. I've never taken care of a child, she said nervously. Then this will be good practice for our future kids, he said. Emma was too tired to question why the director didn't just hire a babysitter, and Eric didn't bother to explain anything else. He kissed her forehead. Go to sleep. She found a comfortable spot on his chest and snuggled in as he pulled her closer, turned off the bedside lamp, and fell into a deep sleep. Episode 285, Business Ventures. Eric and Emma were supposed to meet the French director at his manor, so Eric made arrangements for them to keep a low profile while they traveled. However, he discovered a black car trailing them on their way to the manor. Their camera equipment reflected in the sun, so it wasn't hard to determine who it was. He pretended not to notice as his lips curved up into a smile. He sped up and drove into the garage of the manor a few minutes later. As soon as she saw him, Emma realized Eric was meeting with Matthew Robin. He was well known in international circles and had won an Oscar for Best Director. He slowed down his production schedule after he got married and had chosen to dedicate more time to his daughter. He looked worn out as his daughter clung to his leg and refused to eat breakfast. Matthew smiled at them apologetically. I'm so sorry. I really don't think I have time to talk about a possible collaboration. I'm not even sure I'm in the right frame of mind to consider it after taking care of Kathy these last few days. Eric laughed gently and pointed to Emma as he replied, My wife can help you with your daughter. As for our collaboration, I think you'll be very interested. Matthew studied Emma as he adjusted the gold frames on his nose. Do you guys have children too? No, but my wife is very gentle and caring. I'm sure she can take care of her for a few hours, he replied. Emma approached the little girl, lifted her in her arms, and said to the two men, You guys go talk and leave her with me. I promise I'll take good care of her. Eric watched her as she carried Kathy, his heart racing. He lowered his head and asked quietly, Are you sure you'll be okay? Yes, she said, smiling. Matthew stared in shock at his perfectly content daughter. He eyed her suspiciously and said, You little terror. You never sit that still when I hold you. Kathy giggled at him and hugged Emma's neck. She clearly liked her. Shaking his head, 
he led Eric into his study, while Emma carried Kathy outside to a little patch of grass in the garden. After the maids assured her it was safe to sit on. Kathy was an adorable little girl, and Emma had a feeling she would keep her on her toes for the next few hours. Although your most recent film, Escape, broke box office records over here, it didn't receive the same treatment in the American market. Yes, this is true, Machu replied seriously. European and American culture are very different, and I don't have any interest in creating the same type of films the U.S. is used to. It would ruin my reputation. I also don't like American actors and actresses. They're horrible. Yes, I agree. There are a lot of American celebrities, but they'd never be considered true actors. I just ask that you read the script first before making a decision. Finding actors for it won't be an issue. Eric pulled out the script and handed it to him. Think about it. Matthew looked at the cover of the script. It didn't have the bells and whistles used to attract attention. It only had one word. Stupid. What an interesting name, he thought. He couldn't resist flipping open the script. The story was about a talented athlete who had a one-night stand with an actress and got her pregnant. In order to protect his status, he gave up the child after she gave birth. A few years later, after he had gotten married, he realized he was infertile thanks to all the injuries he'd sustained playing sports. He got divorced and decided to adopt a child as his protege. Unfortunately, the child wasn't very smart and couldn't seem to pick up even the simplest task. Feeling like he had been tricked and unable to contact the social services worker assigned to him, he tried to abandon the child several times. Eventually, the child was adopted by the athlete's biggest enemy, who discovered the child's late talents and trained him. The child was just as athletic as he was and went on to break multiple world records. When the child walked on stage to receive his medal, he said, Despite my father abandoning me 12 times, I became a success and proved myself. If he's watching, I want him to know that he's a bastard. Machu slapped his hands on his thighs excitedly once he finished reading through the script. Amazing! This is brilliant! So, what do you think? Will you do it? Eric asked as he rubbed a finger along his bottom lip. The draft is amazing, he said, eyes gleaming. I will agree to the collaboration, but what about the actor? I guarantee he'll be a great actor. Okay, Machu said, nodding his head in agreement. A few minutes later, the two men heard cheerful laughter coming from the garden. Machu held on to the script and approached the window. Emma was hugging Kathy as they rolled around in the grass. He couldn't help but laugh. Your wife seems to like children. Are you two planning on having any? I want to enjoy a few more years alone before adding to our family. Right now, she's happy with her job, and I want her to enjoy it without the added responsibility of a child for a little while longer. Machu nodded. I didn't know how difficult taking care of a child was until my wife left me here alone to travel to the States. With both of you working and traveling, it'll be hard to juggle the demands of a child. At some point, one of you would have to step back, and sadly, it's usually the woman. She's very lucky to have you looking out for her. I'm the lucky one, Eric replied, smiling. Let's sign the contract. I have a feeling you have what it takes to produce a heart-wrenching and emotional film. 
after seeing how much you adore your wife. Eric glanced at Emma through the window and smiled. Everything means more when I'm with her. He paused and then asked, Machu, do you have a set of binoculars? Yes, why? He asked, puzzled. May I borrow them? Curious, Machu handed a pair of binoculars to him. He scanned the premises and, as expected, found a daredevil reporter sitting in a tree and holding a camera. Unfortunately, he was someone good at capturing handed photos. Is someone stalking you? Those reporters are disgusting, Machu said, agitated as he watched Eric put down the binoculars. My wife is famous, he explained. She's a model, too. I hope you both stay safe. Matthew shook his hand before they both sat back down and signed the contract. Episode 286, Not What It Seems. After they finished talking about their collaboration, Machu wanted to invite the couple to dinner, but Eric politely turned him down. They bid Machu farewell and left the manor. Eric then drove Emma back to the hotel. On the way, he couldn't help but ask, How did you feel about interacting with the kid? It was a little overwhelming. She thought about it carefully and said, Kathy is a bit unruly. Okay, I'll take note of that, he replied. Huh? In the future, our children can't be too unruly, he explained in a serious manner. She let out a gentle laugh and turned to look at him. Do you think you have a choice in how your child turns out? I can teach it. Hearing this, she started imagining him as a father, sitting on the sofa as a little munchkin knelt before him, being scolded for their misbehavior. Just the thought of it was so beautiful. Do you really want one? she asked. He looked at her seriously and shook his head. Let's wait a few years. All I want to do now is love you. She started to lean over to plant a kiss on his cheek, but he told her, That's dangerous. Sit back in your seat. Dangerous? Or is someone tailing us? She asked. Did you think I wouldn't be able to notice the black car that's been following us? The camera's so reflective, it's almost blinded me a few times. I bet they captured a few photos of me and Kathy at the manor, didn't they? What's this all about? The people from Her Vision Studio are following us, he explained. He knew better than to underestimate her. She was much too observant. What do they want? According to the comments they left online, it seems they're claiming you have multiple men. So now they're trying to get more evidence. So you're playing along? She asked. But... I can't keep waiting. He interrupted her sentence before swerving the car into a dead end and explaining. I want to take this opportunity to announce our relationship. I want to tell everyone you're my wife, the woman I treasure the most. But if I were to directly announce it, the people from her vision would continue to look for evidence, make claims, and try to slander you. Rather than letting that happen, I might as well wait for them to make a move first. After they reveal their ultimate plan, I can get rid of them completely and then announce our relationship. Emma finally understood what Eric had done. So you deliberately lured out the people from her vision, didn't you? Also, back at the airport when you suggested we walk openly, 
It's because you wanted people to know our whereabouts. The people from her vision had endured for so long. There was no way they would stop at simply posting a photo. The word ambition was written all over the reporter Kyle's face. Kyle wouldn't be hard to deal with, but what Eric wanted was an opportunity for him and Emma to come out into the open. Can you blame me? he asked. Blame you for what? Emma's eyes suddenly filled with tears. Blame you for being so calculating? Or blame you for doing everything you can to protect me and make others acknowledge me? Just like how I showed you who I was when I went against Nathan and Amber, I want to see the true Eric Roberts. I love you, so I'm willing to stand by your side through anything. We still have a lifetime together. He reached out and pulled her into his embrace. He couldn't help but sigh as he said, God really has been good to me. After all, he brought you to me. Trust me, I will only give you the best. She had always trusted him, and she intended to continue trusting him. She replied firmly, Announce it. Let's use her vision studio to our advantage. They want to uncover a scandal and destroy me. I say we really give the people something to talk about. Wow, who would have thought Emma would be having a play date with the daughter of a big director like Machu? After a long day of stalking, the Hervision staff returned to their hotel. Kyle looked at the photos they had captured and said to his subordinate, No, not the director's daughter. We'll report it as Emma's illegitimate child. But Eric was also there. It was obvious they were there for business. He glared at his subordinate and then waved him off. Report that Emma has an illegitimate daughter in France and then release the photo of her playing with a child. Afterwards, post a photo comparison of the two. Do you think the public will care about the truth? Isn't that too cruel? The subordinate asked. Kaleidoscope's already forced us into a dead end, he explained sternly. If we don't grab this with two hands and fight back, don't even dream of ever stepping foot in New York again. So hurry up and write the article for me. Tomorrow, I want our two teams to be on standby. As long as Emma is overseas, I don't think she can go that long without seeking a man's attention. But, sir, don't forget, Eric is by her side. There's no way he'd let her fool around. Don't be so sure, said Kyle. Do you really think a woman like that will be able to resist her sexual instincts? But she has Eric with her, the subordinate pointed out. He's considered to be the best of the best. Is he not satisfying her? What more could she want? Stop being an idiot. Tomorrow, remember to be on standby, he ordered. With Eric around, the possibility of them capturing solid proof was small, but it didn't mean they couldn't try. What they didn't know was that all the other men they thought she was with all happened to be Eric. Of course, this was all part of Eric's plan. It would be better than letting her vision capture random photos, only to come back again later for something better. At that moment, Eric and Emma were well prepared. All they had to do was wait for her vision to fall into their trap. It was nighttime in New York. A bone-chilling wind swept through the city. After eating dinner together, Louis stared at Caitlin, a question in his gaze. Didn't she say she would leave once it got dark? I don't think the reporters will notice you this late, he said. Just put on a little bit of a disguise. I'll take you home. She responded immediately. I don't have any clothes to wear. 
Did you forget? I arrived in lingerie. I got your assistant to bring some clothes by. I already went down to get them. When was this? She asked awkwardly. While you and Maria were having an afternoon nap, I picked them up. Hurry up and get changed. Why are you rushing me out of here? She didn't actually want to return to her apartment. It was cold, lonely, and made her imagination run wild. I can stay in the guest room. If not, I don't mind sleeping on the sofa. When you're not around, I can keep Maria company. Plus, if I need to look for you, I won't need to make a phone call. In order to avoid a misunderstanding, she quickly explained, There are too many unhappy memories at that apartment. Plus, Amy was able to send someone straight to my front door to assault me. So privacy isn't great. How about I sell it? and move next door to you. I don't have any friends or family and nothing to tie me down. I don't care where I go. All right then, let's go and get your thing, he said, happy that his plan from the start was coming to fruition. Episode 287, One More Hater Night had fallen in France. Emma was sitting by a lamp in their hotel room, flipping through a magazine. After finishing his work, Eric suddenly appeared by her side. I originally wanted to commission a set of jewelry for you, but the Swiss designer needs to urgently return to Switzerland. His wife is in labor. So tonight, we'll get your measurements before he leaves. Jewelry? She put down the magazine in her hands and looked at him questioningly. How come I never heard you mention this before? I'm your manager, so it's natural for me to arrange stuff like this on your behalf. Eric's lips curved upwards as he sat by her side. I know you're not a big fan of gems and diamonds, but since you're married to me, there are definitely situations where you may need to wear them. Look at other models. They love jewelry so much, they would die for diamonds. Why are you not interested in it? I'm helping you save money. She'd never been a vain person and didn't like attention-grabbing things like that. Keeping things natural was her preference. There are only three hours left before the designer flies home. I have a meeting to attend, so you'll need to drive over to the hotel and meet with him on your own. His entire team will be there. They're only missing one measurement. She got the car keys from him and it finally hit her why she was doing this. So, I know your original intention was to get jewelry made for me, but are you trying to provide her vision with some material at the same time? Of course, the main intention is to get jewelry made for you. I noticed there aren't many pieces in your jewelry box at home that you like to wear. Eric grabbed his laptop and showed Emma her schedule. This was planned well ahead of time. It's just you never noticed it. Okay, I'll go. She really didn't enjoy the burden of wearing expensive things, unless she had to do it for work or a client had requested it. Compared to other models, her tastes were very plain. Be careful, he said. If you come across any trouble, give me a call. I'll pick you up later. She smiled as she grabbed her bag and keys and left the hotel room. To continue their act for the reporters, Emma put on her sunglasses and pretended to be doing something secretive. This married couple were top-notch when it came to acting the part. The Her Vision staff member had been watching the hotel for the entire day. 
just looking at the number of cigarette butts on the ground was enough to know how anxious they were. As the coolness of the night air hit them, the three men wrapped themselves tightly in their jackets and tucked their necks in. Shit, how is this bitch so hard to get a good photo of? One of them complained. His colleague patted him on the shoulder and smiled helplessly. It's because she's so good at scheming that she's this hard to figure out. But it's easy to see how she reached the level she's at now. I'm just tired of waiting around, man. Wait, look. It's our lucky day. The three men simultaneously looked to where Eric's car was parked and saw Emma walking into the parking lot on her own. After confirming no one was around, she got in her car and drove off. The three men looked at each other and checked their camera equipment before they quickly followed behind. This woman is just shopping and taking us in circles. All we're doing is wasting space in our memory cards, complained one of the reporters. Let's follow her for a little more. Emma had the people from her vision within her grasp. She'd already seen through them, so she got back in the car and hurried to the hotel to meet the jeweler. After arriving outside the hotel, she parked inside the parking garage, but she did not hurry to get out of the car. After five minutes, a tall and skinny young man arrived at the parking garage from the elevator and escorted Emma inside. The HerVision staff snapped furiously with their cameras, working hard to capture as many photos as possible of Emma and the man. They were so happy that they were high-fiving each other in excitement. Kyle was right, said one of the paparazzi. This woman has to find someone to satisfy her appetite. Maybe Eric's too old to give her what she needs. Whatever. With this, we finally got what we needed. The three men basked in joy for a little while before forwarding all their photos to Kyle. You better prepare the reward you promised, they told him. Kyle looked at the photos. His eyes were fierce and piercing like a wolf's. Emma, let's see where you run off to this time, he thought. Don't worry, you'll get your reward he told the reporters. Then he instructed, After Emma comes out, you can all return to the hotel. We finally have enough evidence to set up a good battle. No need to continue trailing her. Finally, the reporters exclaimed. Cheers to freedom! I can't wait to go home and watch what happens next. The three men seemed quite happy. But they had no idea Eric had been trailing them in a different car and watching them. He observed the three reporters with a cold expression. His ink-black eyes contained a look of ridicule, of disdain. He'd been unable to bear letting Emma drive on her own, especially when there were reporters trailing her. He thought it best to wait around until she called to be picked up. He waited a short while, and then his phone rang. Seeing Emma's name pop up on the screen, he answered it. Did you get your measurements done? he asked. Uh-huh. I'll wait for you at the hotel, she replied. No need. I'm already here. Come downstairs. She looked at the time. She'd been upstairs for less than 20 minutes. Were you following me? No, I was following the people who were following you, he explained before describing their reaction. I bet they're planning a celebration. They looked very happy with themselves. He started his car, left the parking lot, and drove around to the main entrance to pick up Emma. As for the three rotten eggs in the parking lot, they to continue waiting. It would be best for them to assume Emma spent an entire night upstairs. Does all of this make you feel uncomfortable? He asked. She looked straight ahead and remained quiet for a few seconds. Then she replied, 
Why would I feel uncomfortable? I wasn't the one that hurt others first. I stuck to my principles and didn't do anything out of line. I don't understand why Kyle keeps coming after me. This guy isn't the same as other paparazzi, said Eric. He's working for money, but that's not his only motivation. It was a coincidence that he ran into you at the start, but afterwards, he slowly developed a misunderstanding of you. Luke has already discovered that he's been married three times and divorced three times. His failed marriages have caused him to develop a hatred towards women. That's why he went from being a TV broadcaster to a paparazzi. He thinks he's serving justice by uncovering people's private lives. Emma smiled calmly. She no longer felt as upset as she had before. In fact, she felt the situation was quite funny. It's quite an odd feeling to be hated by a stranger to this extent. But truthfully, I've had so many haters. What's one more? I know the truth will eventually be revealed, and he'll regret his actions, because I trust that you'll help me clear this up in the end. Episode 288, Attention and Fame. Eric stretched out his hand and stroked Emma's hair. That's a given. Actually, the thing that she admired most about him was his ability to draw a fine line between love and hate. When someone was right, they were right. When someone was wrong, they were wrong. He was firm on his decisions and never beat around the bush. That's why they were a great fit. She was suited to the life of accompanying him in his unstable entertainment industry. Meanwhile, all he wanted to do was help her fulfill her dreams. After returning to the hotel, she sat by his side and kept him company while he read his documents. He turned his head to look at her, eyes half-closed, and laughed. You have an interview with Claude Neville tomorrow. Hurry, get some rest, he told her. I want to hug you to sleep, she replied with a raspy voice. He glanced at the documents in front of him before helping her up and leading her to bed. After sitting down on the mattress, he patted his chest and said, Come here. She flipped aside the blankets and lay beside him as she wrapped her arms around his waist. He embraced her with one arm and read his documents with the other. However, after reading one page, he realized he had no way of flipping to the next. She held his arm tightly in place, as if she were doing it on purpose. He understood her intention and put down his documents before giving Luke the call. Mr. Roberts. Director Shaw has come looking for me quite a few times. He wants to invest on Stupid on behalf of Snapshot Film. But from what I see, it's his son Steven's idea. We already have sufficient funds for Stupid. If he comes looking for you again, you can directly turn him away. But he's a shareholder of Kaleidoscope, said Luke. Plus, He's already given 3.2% of the shares to his son. It appears Steven wants to get involved in Kaleidoscope's operations. I can't guarantee that he won't make a move again in the future. Perhaps my recent actions have made them think I've been blinded by love and that they have an opportunity. Mr. Roberts, I'm merely reporting this incident to you. It's nothing for you to worry about. Luke explained. Keep an eye on their every move, Eric ordered. He hung up his phone and placed it gently on top of the bedside table. Hugging Emma, he lay back down. In the darkness, 
His thoughts were aflame. There always have to be a few greedy people that want control over Kaleidoscope's operations. Do they think just because I'm Emma's manager, I won't be able to manage Kaleidoscope? Are they questioning my capability? Meanwhile, back in New York, it was the first night Caitlin had officially moved into Luis's home. Of course, nothing happened. She slept in the guest room. She woke up early in the morning. Not long after, she heard Luis's bedroom door open. She spotted him wearing a pair of boxers as he entered the kitchen. He was a little surprised. He never expected her to wake up so early. He immediately ran back into his room and put on a robe before reappearing in front of her. Why are you up so early? he asked. I have an interview today and may need to go overseas in a couple days, she explained. Plus, it's almost January, so with Fashion Week coming up in March, I may need to be overseas for quite some time. He nodded, but his face did not show much emotion. I won't be able to go with you. There are quite a few matters to deal with at Kaleidoscope. I don't need you to accompany me the way Mr. Roberts accompanies Emma. I just... After a short pause, she continued. If I'm going to be gone for three months, will I return to find that you've become someone else's boyfriend? Or perhaps another female artist like Amy appears who requires your protection? This is a woman's paranoia at work, Louis thought. He retrieved some milk and other breakfast ingredients from the fridge. As he closed the fridge door, he replied, I only have two girlfriends. The big one is currently standing in my kitchen doorway, while the little one is sleeping away in my child's bedroom. She felt a little silly. So she hurried behind him and wrapped her arms around him. You're not being very affectionate towards me. He loosened himself from her embrace and turned around to face her. It's been seven years since Maria's mother passed away. My life revolves around the industry. Besides the nanny, you're the only woman who's entered this house. If you want to get married, let me know. You're the only woman that makes me feel impulsive enough to do something like that. She froze in surprise. They had just become official yesterday. She wondered, is he proposing? I don't need you to answer me right now, he continued. I just want you to know how I feel. The two of them had both experienced so much and had so much on their shoulders. Being given the opportunity to continue living was already a huge gift from God. Her eyes filled with tears. Emma was right, she said. God always leaves the best for last. I finally feel that all the trouble I've been through was worth it. He leaned over and kissed her on the forehead. Go get changed. And can you give Maria a bath while you're at it? On the surface, Luis appeared quite relaxed and often seemed like he was messing around. But Caitlin knew, deep inside, he had suffered more than many people. It didn't matter, though, because she was going to help him have a new lease on life. Back in France, inside an exceptionally decorated studio, Emma and Eric met with the world-class designer Claude Neville. He was an old French man with a long beard. As soon as he spotted her legs, he couldn't take his eyes off them. These legs are truly the most beautiful I've ever seen, he uttered. Eric replied, Claude, we're so excited to collaborate with you. It was sometimes hard to understand the workings of a designer's mind. But being picked for her legs was quite normal. There were cases of models being picked for their butts, fingers, feet, and even moles. I'm very pleased. Let's talk about the contract, 
the designer replied. He was set on using Emma. However, I have one condition, he continued. You will need to stay in France and sign on as a model at our subsidiary agency. I need a pair of legs like this. I love legs like this. After hearing the man's request, she furrowed her brows. Of course, your manager can also join us, he added. She analyzed Claude's studio and noticed his table was covered in photos of models' legs. It seemed his main concept was legs. Claude, I'm sure I explain things clearly over the phone. She will only take part in this one shoot, Eric said in a calm yet stern tone. He had not told Claude his real identity. Claude turned around and looked at the couple with an obviously unhappy expression and said, Don't tell me you don't want an opportunity as great as this. I'm sure you both know that every model I have ever invited has ended up gaining a lot of attention and fame. Doesn't Emma need this? Trust me, she is not desperate for attention and fame. Episode 289 the right connection. Claude leaned over and returned to measuring fabrics on the workbench. With his chin out, he pointed to the doorway. Since this is your decision, you can show yourself out. His temper was a little strange to Emma. She felt her original judgment of him had been too kind. She had to reevaluate him. There was something else a little unnerving that she was beginning to pick up on. Legs weren't merely his main concept. They were his fetish. Claude thought Eric would adjust his attitude and ask him to renegotiate, but Eric did not have that intention at all. He protected Emma as they turned around to leave. However, at that time, Henry Roy appeared at Claude's doorway with a model from Star King. The two parties looked at each other as Henry let out a laugh and said, Could it be that our never-failing Mr. Roberts has actually failed at something? Eric looked at Henry indifferently. He held no regard for him whatsoever. Do you want me to speak a few good words to Claude on Emma's behalf? To be honest, over the past few days, we've become quite close, Henry said arrogantly as he shook the drops of rain off his body. Man, it's really coming down out there. No one knew better than Eric what Henry had been getting up to the past two days. It was no coincidence that Luke had arrived in France just the day before. I don't think you should speak until you win a game of cards against me, Eric said. He let out a laugh as he placed his arm around Emma's shoulder and prepared to leave. However, Henry held them back once again. Would this be considered a loss for Kaleidoscope against Star King? After all, Emma didn't secure an advertisement with Claude. Emma was confused by Eric's behavior. She felt he was acting a little out of the ordinary. She was surprised that he hadn't tried once to renegotiate an offer with Claude, especially if it could have been a great business deal for Kaleidoscope. This seems to be Star King's goal. Isn't winning against me and securing Claude your biggest glory? Eric's lips suddenly curved upward. Emma glanced at him and knew he was about to make a move. As expected, Eric calmly continued, To be honest, Claude has already been eliminated from our options. Luckily, he gave us a reason to reject him. Henry burst into laughter, assuming that Eric was just trying to protect his pride. However, Eric pulled out his phone, opened an email, and summarized its contents aloud. 
Clementine was this year's first place winner at the World Design Awards, whereas Claude came in fifth place. Clementine is owned by Claude's ex-wife, who's a woman with strong morals, unlike someone who only knows how to gawk at Emma's legs. So, if you're interested in Claude, I'll leave him for you. Eric led Emma out of Claude's studio, while Henry was left bewildered with a pale expression. She noticed Henry's lifeless face and couldn't help but ask Eric, What was all that about? How did you manage to do so much behind my back? You obviously never left my side. I don't need to leave the house to discuss a contract. It can easily be done online. Then what's the deal with Clementine? He started the car as he smiled at her curiosity. Luis got a list of passenger names from New York to Paris. On that list, we found Henry. So I instructed Luke to fly to Paris and keep an eye on him. That's when we discovered he had contacted Claude in private. During our visit to Mathieu's manor, I briefly mentioned that you were a model, but I never expected he would recommend you to Clementine. So I received a phone call from Clementine last night. Even though we already had an appointment with Claude, she said she was willing to wait. If Claude had not been so unreasonable, you would have let me work with them, right? She asked. But either way, you always had a backup plan. Yep, he said, nodding. I also had to consider Henry. It seemed the slap they had just given Henry had pierced straight through to his heart. I think right now, not only is Henry furious, but so is Claude. From the moment he stared at your legs, I'd already decided to give up on Claude, he said in a cold tone. And after he stared at you for the tenth time, I was tempted to rip his eyes out. Manager, you sure are fierce, she said. They were lucky that everything worked out the way it did. But those in the industry without luck never stood a chance at fame no matter what their background was. Let's go meet with Clementine now, she suggested. She never imagined that this trip to France would result in a twist like this. Everything was so surreal. Perhaps it was the result of Eric handling the entire matter on his own. She felt he did too much behind the scenes, making her feel like everything was staged he noticed she was suddenly silent. What are you thinking about? he asked. You're always ten steps ahead. Just when I think I can keep up with your way of thinking, you show me that I'm still far off, she replied. If you want to work with Clementine, what you need to do is present an even higher level of professionalism, he explained to her seriously. Quite a lot has happened in the last two days, but I didn't intentionally hide it all from you. Everything happened too quickly, so I simply didn't want to take your emotions on a roller coaster ride. The higher one stands, the more enemies they will have. If you don't have time to deal with something, then you'll need to learn to let it go. She closed her eyes feeling a little overwhelmed. It was not that she felt she wasn't smart enough. It's just that her husband was much too powerful. How could I have survived without him, she thought. You've almost spoiled me to the point where I can't be independent, she said. Emma leaned against Eric's shoulder as they headed for their appointment with Clementine. This French woman who'd almost made a vow to be a nun before she decided to pursue design, was extremely friendly. As soon as she saw Emma, she gave her a hug. Welcome. I really like the storyline of Stupid. Mathieu shared it with me. I hope your husband doesn't mind. 
Emma looked at Eric confusedly, and he responded with a helpless smile. Don't worry, Clementine continued. He only shared a small snippet with me because he wanted my help in designing a costume. Eric knew what he was doing. It was a breach of contract and involved a leak of business confidentiality, but he had no intention of using the design of a world-class master designer. The budget would be too expensive. That's why I have a brave suggestion. I would like to use your wife as inspiration for the costume of the actress that has the one-night stand with the athlete, says Clementine. I also want to film a commercial with her so we can achieve a win-win situation. The film will have a higher possibility of success across the country, and my design will become known to a bigger market. What do you think, Mr. Robert? He presented a poised smile, looking extremely charming. I'm lucky you aren't in the entertainment industry, or else I would have another competitor. Mr. Robert sure knows the right thing to say, she commented. And just like that, the couple knew they had made the right connection. After an enjoyable dinner, they returned to the hotel. Eric explained the story of Stupid to Emma, and she found it exceptionally entertaining. It's been a long time since I've seen such a great script. I wonder which screenwriter wrote this. You don't know him, he replied straightforwardly. She had her assumptions, but she didn't question him any further. Episode 290 Playing the Field Clementine's design and advertisement would take at least half a month to produce and would need to be made to measure for Emma. While she was getting her measurements recorded, Eric sat to the side with Clementine and had a coffee. She turned her head and looked at Emma before asking him curiously, Have you decided on the female lead? We're still casting for it, he replied. Although she doesn't appear much in the film, she still plays an important role. Why don't you consider her? She pointed to Emma with her chin. You don't want her to pursue film and television? This is a great opportunity. He tilted his head and looked at Emma. He didn't say anything. He simply looked at Clementine with a meaningful smile. The autumn winter fashion week is about to start, said Clementine. With Emma's professionalism and long legs, it's only a matter of time before she becomes world famous. I feel once she's reached such heights, then she'll have an interest in pursuing something else. Appearing on the runway and appearing on the big screen are two very different things. She's always enjoyed taking things slowly, he replied, one step at a time. After getting her measurements done, Emma returned to Eric's side and looked at both him and Clementine. What are you saying about me? How do you know we were talking about you? he asked as he tilted his head in interest. Because your gaze never once left me, she replied. My eyes have always been on you. He stood up and shook Clementine's hand before leaving with Emma. Just before they left, Clementine leaned against the doorway, crossed her arms, and reminded him, You really should consider it. He smirked before leaving with Emma. I've booked a flight back to New York tonight. Tomorrow, I'll need to attend the filming commencement press release for a major IP drama. And Fashion Week is also about to start. I need to set aside time ahead of schedule. Earlier, what did Clementine tell you to consider? She'd not forgotten the mysterious conversation between the two. Let's talk about it later. 
He looked at her with a passionate gaze and said, We still have a bit of time this afternoon. Let's go for a walk around the streets of Paris. It's been a long time since we've gone for a stroll together. Can we? Can we walk around hand in hand? As you wish, he replied. He playfully tapped her on the nose and smiled at her lovingly. She was too easy to satisfy. Something so simple as an afternoon stroll was enough to make her happy for a long time. After returning to the hotel, Luke had completed his task and returned to Eric's side. When the couple saw him, he had a stern look on his face. Emma's instincts told her that Luke had business to discuss with Eric, so she let go of his hand and said, You go handle this. I'll go ahead and stroll around on my own first. Emma, Lisa wants me to bring back some things for her, but I have no idea how to tell the difference between the real and the fake stuff, said Luke as he pulled a list from his pocket. Emma remembered the conversation she'd had with Lisa just before she left New York. She took the list from Luke and said, Leave it with me. I'll go buy them. Eric held onto her hands, looked at her apologetically, and said, I said I was going to go with you. I'm more familiar with France than you. I won't get lost, she replied, trying to comfort him. Plus, I know that if it weren't something important, you would have thrown it aside already. So hurry, and get to work. Then stay nearby. Don't go too far. Okay, she said, nodding. He still wasn't comfortable with her going out on her own, so he requested for the hotel to send two bodyguards to follow behind her. In order not to go too far from Eric's sight, she simply strolled around nearby. Finally, she settled down at a cafe. After sitting there for quite some time, she decided to get up and return to the hotel. However, just as she stood up, she realized someone had recognized her and had been stalking her. She headed directly back to the hotel. As Eric and Luke were still busy, she quietly sat down in their room and watched a movie. Unbeknownst to her, the person stalking her wasn't a normal passerby. He was someone sent by Henry to camp outside the hotel. When he noticed the bodyguards following behind Emma, he carefully avoided them. He didn't disturb her. He simply followed her and took photos of her. Afterwards, he sent the photos to Henry so he could go to the same locations and pretend he was there with her, enjoying coffee and strolling through the streets. Although they never appeared in the same frame, those who saw the photos were left to their own imagination. Since Eric didn't want to play with him, Henry was going to force him to make a move. That night, Emma, Eric, and Luke returned to New York. However, they ran into the clingy Henry at the airport. Little did they know that their meeting was by Henry's design. Mr. Roberts, what a coincidence. I never thought we'd run into each other again. Coincidence? Eric laughed. I'm sure you're well aware of how much of a coincidence this is. Since Henry had put in so much effort to stalk them, Eric was going to sit and watch what game he was trying to play. Mr. Roberts, let's go. It's time to board the plane, Luke informed them. He had followed this player for an entire day, but he just couldn't figure the spoiled rich kid out. Above all, he couldn't understand where he'd gotten his skewed views of the world. A person that went around trying to ruin others' lives would not have a promising future. Henry shrugged and boarded the plane closely behind Luke. Coincidence? Of course not. 
Henry being able to find out Eric and Emma's flight number was solely because Eric wanted him to know. Henry was not the only one orchestrating something. All four of them happened to be seated in first class. However, Eric and Emma treated Henry like he didn't exist. Just before the flight took off, Henry posted a message he had prepared earlier on his social media account. A short date. The post was accompanied by three photos. The back of a woman, two empty coffee cups, and a view of his own back. As soon as his post went up, his social media account exploded. At first, no one recognized the woman was Emma until she got off her flight to New York, and everyone noticed she was wearing the same clothes as in the photo. No way, they all thought. The Emma who's been sticking around Eric actually had a date with Henry? Quick, take a look, someone announced. Here are the photos from fans that went to greet Emma at the airport. Emma's clothes are the same as in the photo posted by Henry. It is the same person, isn't it? People immediately put the two photos together and compared them as they screamed in shock. What kind of twist is this? How did Emma get involved with this spoiled rich kid? Is our favorite couple breaking up? Discussions continued amongst the people viewing the photos. No way. Wasn't Mr. Roberts with Emma the entire time? I think Emma and Henry are closer in age, so they'd get along better. Is Emma playing the field? Online, news about Emma and Henry spread like wildfire. If Caitlin didn't know Emma, even she would have thought Emma was having some sort of fling with the spoiled rich kid. She immediately gave Luis a call. Have you seen the news about Emma? What's this all about? Hurriedly, he replied, We're handling it. Episode 291 The Ship Has Sailed The atmosphere in the airport was tense. Many members of Emma's fan club were also fans of her and Eric as a couple. Henry posting the photos before they boarded the flight had left more than enough time for the rumors to marinate. Going through the airport would be difficult for her, especially since she was walking out of the same terminal as Eric and Henry. However, Eric was well prepared, as always. He held his jacket over Emma and helped her weave through the crowd. By the time the crowd had registered their presence, he'd already escorted her through the exit of the terminal. Kaleidoscope's van was ready and waiting for their arrival, so they were able to quickly step aboard before they could be sucked into a black hole of cameras. While they smoothly sped away from the airport, Henry was stuck at the exit. Faced with reporters questioning, Henry smacked on his gum disdainfully as he tried to ignore them. Mr. Roy, what relationship do you have with Emma Miller? Can you say? One reporter blurted out. Mr. Roy, were you and Emma on a date? Asked another, readily waiting with their camera to catch his reaction. After noticing one of the reporters being knocked around by the surrounding crowd, Henry stopped in his tracks, took off his sunglasses, and finally turned around. What you saw is what happened. I have no comments. The reporters glanced between him and each other in shock and confusion. Is he confirming a relationship between him and Emma? They wondered. The gears in their heads turned at the impossibility of it all, because Emma had Eric standing beside her. While neither Kaleidoscope nor Star King had stomped out the other, they were nowhere near good terms. Henry barked a laugh of delight as he saw the reporters ate up his words. 
he took advantage of the opportunity to join airport security and leave the airport and the day's reporter behind. I'm not sure I'm willing to take Henry's word for it. He's never been trustworthy before, one reporter said with a frown. Exactly. I'd rather hear what Mr. Roberts has to say. That'll be the truth. Another reporter complained. But that's the problem. We can't even get an interview with him. Emma had never expected the spectacle she would return to after only being gone for two days. As soon as she turned on her phone in the back seat of the company van, she was overwhelmed with notifications from Lisa and Caitlin, both questioning her about the incident with Henry. What kind of spell would you have to be under in order to cheat on Eric? Lisa joked. Although Emma was aware it was only a joke, the phone was on speakerphone, and Eric wasn't anywhere near amused. He grabbed the phone out of her hand and growled, Be careful that your jokes don't cross the line. Lisa stumbled over her words to reassure Emma that she hadn't meant to make her uncomfortable. Lisa's face burned painfully in embarrassment. It's okay, Emma comforted Lisa, retrieving her phone from Eric. When the call had ended, she switched her attention to him and asked, Did you know this would happen? He gave her an incredulous look and asked in apprehension, What do you think? I'm not sure, she replied. She knew the question may have made him feel uncomfortable, but the thought had crossed her mind, and she'd promised not to hide things from him. Emma, I'm not a god. I can't predict everything, he said with a frown. She reached across his lap to take his hand. Over the past two days, I felt lost, like my brain couldn't get on the same page as yours. That's why I had to ask, she explained. It's better to ask you than wait until I feel caught up. I thought that you would know, even if I don't say anything. His face crumpled in hurt as he tried to find the right word. Her heart ached at his expression, so she continued. When people ask me questions, I want to make sure I give the same answers as you, because we're one unit. He took a deep breath, exhaling a flash of frustration that had run through him. He pulled her closer and explained, If I had known Henry was going to do this, I would have gotten rid of him once and for all. His expression grew dark. I didn't protect you well enough. It sounds like you're already giving up, she chastised lightly. I refuse to believe that you won't find a solution. I refuse to believe that you sent bodyguards after me just for my safety. She lay across the back seat and rested her head on his thigh, looking up with a gleam in her eye. Plus, we've always been covert, Mr. Roberts. He returned her smile and ran his fingers through her ink-black hair. What should I do? Previously, I could tolerate people saying one or two bad things about you, but these days, I can't even stand to hear one word. But I'm already used to it, she replied gently. From now on, you must tell me about every decision you make. In that case? If I was to tell you that I expected Henry to do something like this a long time ago, would you start an argument with me? She nodded. Probably. We've been together a while. Now that we understand each other more, we're bound to disagree on some things. He playfully groaned at her response, placing a hand over his heart. I think I may regret asking. I guess I did this to myself. He gazed down at her, knowing he would have answered the same as her. 
her honesty and genuineness always emboldened him to be the same. The bodyguards that were following you had body cameras on them. They contacted me as soon as they discovered someone was stalking you and taking photos. But the person didn't do anything rash, or stick around long enough for them to report on it any further. He frowned in regret. Mrs. Roberts, I only knew Henry had sent someone to follow you. Who would have thought his goal was to create fake evidence? Do you have a video recording? She asked. I need to confirm once we get home, but the footage of you walking on your own is definitely complete, he replied. She let out a laugh. Her mood was greatly improved. Do you want to take this opportunity to announce our relationship? He shook his head. Because of Henry? No, he's not worth it. Eric was waiting for her vision to make a move. He wondered, are they going to try and extort us, or do they want something else? Whatever it is, they need to decide soon. Emma nodded in response, closing her eyes to relax. Then you should finish this bastard. Should I? He asked mildly, looking at his wife in awe. Henry really doesn't know the woman he's messing with, he thought. Before she fell asleep, she murmured, It disgusts me to have my name next to his. Then I'll do it. She did not hear his final response, but she wouldn't have been able to understand the deeper meaning behind it anyway. The moment they had returned to New York, Eric had instructed Luis to release photos of him and Emma that the public had never seen. Fans that shipped them were overjoyed at the photos. They quickly had Emma and Eric's names trending, overshadowing the photos Henry had posted online. When Eric saw the results, he called Luis and told him, Keep us trending. When Emma sees this, she'll feel a lot better. Episode 292, Changing Tides in the Chat Room Luis's mind boggled when Eric requested that he post a photo online of the couple together at Kaleidoscope Celebration Dinner to make Emma feel more comfortable. What a devoted husband! He does everything he can to make his wife comfortable, Luis wondered silently. Out loud, he asked, after that, what else should we do? On behalf of the agency, send Star King a warning. Tell them not to stir up trouble and to get Henry to clarify the entire incident, Eric instructed. But that brat definitely won't cooperate. Didn't he create this rumor on purpose? Exactly. So for now, let's wait until the issue escalates. Then, we'll hold a press conference and invite this alleged boyfriend so Emma can decide how she wants to deal with him. Eric explained calmly, Star King's reputation is not our problem. If the rich brat wants to play around, his agency's reputation is a reasonable consequence. I heard a while ago that Star King's board of directors have been questioning the Roy family's authority over the operations of the agency, Louise added. Hearing this, Eric removed the phone from his ear and hung up. His dark eyes flashed dangerously, because Star King wasn't the only one troubled by people questioning authority. Someone at Kaleidoscope had also been wanting to cause trouble. Arguments over the photos posted by Henry churned relentlessly online. Fans were determined to find out the truth. However, this time, the fans were not battling the rumors alone. Prior to going overseas, 
Emma had promised Eric to treat her fans better. To fulfill this, she logged on to Lisa's account and dug into the social media comments. With surprising accuracy, the first comment said, This incident seems like someone's trying to defame Emma again. Most fans were complaining on her behalf. One person bemoaned, Why can't these people just let our Emma be happy? They must be jealous of our Emma and Eric being together, claimed another fan. If we complain too much, people are just going to say fans are the problem. But Emma's been publicly attacked and defamed more times than I can count. We have suffered through so many insults. I swear, I'm about to cry from the anger. Spotting the last comment, Emma commented from Lisa's account, Need a tissue? It took a few moments before the other fans noticed, but the comments fired off as soon as someone noticed Lisa's photo. That fan quickly pointed it out to the others. Hold on. Was that Emma's assistant that just commented? Lisa, quick, tell us how Emma's doing. Someone countered. Guys, I doubt she's allowed to say something on her own. I am well, Emma responded directly to the second comment. Fans were quick to notice her use of I instead of she and began messaging faster than she could read. Am I seeing things? Did she just say, I am well? Lisa, have you gone insane? Emma looked at the comments in disbelief at her fans' enthusiasm. She quickly typed another comment. Don't be afraid to uncover the truth. And don't worry, I'm not with Mr. Roy. If you need help, let me know. There was a slight pause in the responses before someone finally asked, Are you Emma? Emma considered for a moment how to prove it. She took a selfie and posted it, saying, Yes, I am. Her brief response was fuel to the fire, and her posts were reposted and screenshots were sent to those who weren't online. The thread quickly snowballed with new users making it impossible for her to continue chatting with them. She posted an announcement on Lisa's profile. I won't attack unless I'm attacked first. Hardcore fans knew this was a motto Emma lived by, and this gave them the confidence they needed. They trusted she was telling the truth and believed that she was too smart to be with a man like Henry Roy. To most of the fans, it seemed like common sense that, as her manager, Eric was also privy to her entire life, and it was unlikely a relationship like this would have slipped under his radar. Many of them also voiced that no one in their right mind would trade a striking man like Eric for Henry. Emma was surprised by the amount of satisfaction she gained from interacting with her fans. She had wondered before if she came across as cold-hearted, but she was far from it. The only reason she had not interacted much with her fans before was because she was so busy working to advance her career. Part of her had also been worried about becoming close with her fans only to embarrass them with her own choices. But now, she was confident in her ability to be someone her fans could look up to. As the night blanketed New York, Eric returned home from Kaleidoscope, still agitated from work. Upon seeing his wife sitting on the sofa, looking at her fans' comments, he sat down beside her and pulled her into his embrace. These days I can come home to see your smile? Emma, you sure have changed. She put down her phone and leaned into his arms. Is it a good change or a bad change? Haven't you noticed? When we first met, you had walls around your heart. You decided to trust me because you believed it was for your own benefit. Despite what you've experienced and your doubts against the world, your heart began to soften. 
Now, you've completely let go of your inhibitions. You enthusiastically interact with your world and share your opinions, even if it means arguing with me. I feel like the person you are now is finally alive. His words surprised her. They made her realize she had changed much more than she'd previously thought. I was able to trust that there are people in the world who are willing to give without complaints and regret because you treat me so well. First, I trusted you. Then, I slowly trusted the rest of the world. Tears burned in her eyes as she continued. Mr. Robert, you have truly taught me what love is. He gently wiped away her tears before planting a light kiss upon her dewy eyelashes. I'm going to take a shower. Don't look at your phone for too long. It's not good for your eyes. Plus, why are you crying? We get to spend the rest of our lives together, and you don't need to be afraid of Henry defaming you like this. She nodded her head as she wiped away her tears. I've never been afraid. I've got you. Then let's just enjoy the show Star King is about to put on for us. He called behind him as he took off his jacket and headed for the bathroom. As she watched him walk away, Emma thought, Good show? Sounds like my husband is up to more than just posting pictures of us online. Episode 293. Speak now and pull out the receipt. Just before going to bed, Caitlin called Emma to ask her for the entire story. How did she manage to get on the spoiled heir's bad side anyway, she wondered. Emma rolled her eyes on the other side of the phone. Not sure why he's the heir to Star King. He just messes around and does whatever he wants without caring about the consequences. I mean, the reason he's acting like this now is probably because of how many times Mr. Roberts has embarrassed him in public, Caitlin pointed out. It's all the same. Let's meet up tomorrow. Can I come to your place? Emma suggested. Her suggestion was a sudden reminder to Caitlin that she'd not yet told Emma she was moving in with Louise. The last time she'd tried to tell her, Eric had answered the phone. Now that it was brought up, she didn't know where to start. I'm packing right now, and my home is a mess. I also started interviewing for Fashion Week, Caitlin trailed off, wondering if Emma could hear her distress. That's fine. We can just talk later. Before Emma could end the call, she heard a man's voice in the background from Caitlin's side. Noting the mess in her room as he walked in, Louise had asked Caitlin, Have you finished packing? Emma's ears perked in interest. If I remember correctly, aren't both your manager and assistant women, right? Caitlin. She dragged out her name teasingly. Caitlin glared at Louis and pointed to her phone. He understood, but didn't care to remain silent, since he was aware her only friend was Emma. He plucked the phone out of her hand and told Emma, She's currently packing her luggage. She has an early flight tomorrow and needs to get some rest. That's Louise, Emma thought with surprise. I put in all that effort to matchmake them with no response, but as soon as I back off, they get together. I guess love goes at its own pace. So you're staying with her? She's moving into my home, he corrected. Well, don't stay up too late, Emma ended the call, not wanting to disturb them any longer. While she was truly happy for Caitlin... 
her thoughts couldn't help but flicker to his daughter. Did she say anything else? Caitlin asked him, seeing him set down the phone. He helped her close her suitcase, smiling ambiguously. She told us not to stay up too late. Actually, I was just about to tell you that I accidentally spilled some moisturizing toner on the bed. He moved her suitcase to the floor and looked at the wet patch on the bed. He grabbed her pillow and pulled her behind him with a mischievous smile. Tonight, you can sleep in my room. You can use me however you need before you go. Once she ended the call, Emma realized Eric still hadn't come into the bedroom. She sat beside him when she found him in the study. How come you're still up? he asked. Apparently, Caitlin and Louise are officially together. She peered over his shoulder at the document he was working on. Wasn't that what you'd hoped for? You should always trust your instincts. She ignored him. You should stop working now. You still need to attend the filming commencement press release for that drama tomorrow. She gently tugged the document out of his hand, intertwined their fingers, and pulled him back to the bedroom together. While Eric was getting dressed the following morning, Luke called him. Once again, Luke reported to his boss, Henry's stirring up trouble. He posted a poem on his personal social media about relations between a man and a woman. It's pretty graphic. Although Henry did not clarify who the poem was about, it's pretty clear he was trying to battle it out with Eric. He was trying to take over the trend Eric's post had started the previous day with a post of his own. Eric didn't say anything. He sighed through his nose and ended the call. When he stepped out of the bedroom in his gray checkered suit, he reminded Emma, You don't have anything scheduled today, so there's no need for you to leave the house. She paused from cooking breakfast to look at him. Are you trying to hide the poem from me? She asked in a soft voice. I'm afraid of how the public will react, and if someone will retaliate against you. She passed a glass of milk to Eric and conceded with a nod of her head. I'll stay at home and watch movies. Don't look at the discussions online. I can already imagine what they're saying. It doesn't really matter if I look at them or not. The way Henry had exploited her image by posting the poem left a stain on her name and a bitter taste in her mouth. Even when the rumors had officially been proven false, he would be associated with her because most people did not actually care about the truth. They were bored and happy to let her pay the pound of flesh for their entertainment. I'll handle it. As if eager to prove himself, he left their home without eating breakfast. After instructing Luke to head to the press release, he gave Patrick Roy a call. With a steady voice, Eric gave Patrick an ultimatum. Either your son disappears, or Star King, pick one. Despite only finding out what his idiot son had done, Patrick was neither surprised by the call from Eric, nor his demand. Mr. Roberts, Patrick started tentatively. If he steps out of line one more time, I'll do it for you. And my choice is both. The hand Patrick held his phone in tremored. But before he could explain or talk his way out, Eric had already hung up. From his van, Eric wrote out an official statement on his laptop and sent it to Luis. In the document, Eric instructed Luis to officially warn Star King, release the statement, hold a press conference at three that afternoon to present the video evidence, and give a final warning to everyone, media included, 
to get in line. Eric wanted them to clean up the mess that had been left in the media and online. After sending it, Eric thought, as for me, I'm going to do what I need to do. Luis immediately ordered the legal team to contact Star King and officially warn them that there would be repercussions if they didn't get Henry under control. The news quickly leaked to the public, stirring the pot further. Kaleidoscope made a move. They just sent out a legal notice to Star King, one entertainment news social media page reported. Comments buzzed, saying things like, I think Henry might be missing a few brain cells. Does he think everyone is stupid? And he posted the photo knowing Kaleidoscope would target him. Isn't this a show of true love? One comment criticized the entire situation, saying, It just looks like two men fighting over a woman to me. How childish. Fans defended Emma diligently. Poor Emma is being insulted by all these random people that don't know the truth. If she explains herself, they'll say she loves drama. If she doesn't defend herself, they'll say she's confirming all the rumors. She can't win. I still ship Emma and Eric. Mr. Roberts isn't stupid. He would have ditched her a long time ago if she really betrayed him. The real question is, when is Mr. Roberts going to speak up for Emma? The final question was the one also burning at the tip of Elisa's tongue. Anger broiled within her as she watched Henry escalate the situation. She felt as if she would explode as she stormed over to Tribeca. Emma! Lisa began her protest as soon as Emma opened the door. I know what you want to say. However... I trust Eric, Emma replied, holding the book she'd been reading in her hand. I know what he plans on doing. I know better than anyone how much thought he's put into it. Eric knew all too well. It was time for him to personally speak up. Episode 294, You Can Only Pick One. Emma continued reassuring Lisa, Eric and I are a unit. If I speak out separately, it makes it look like I'm fighting that jerk alone and detracts from what Eric does. So I choose to just trust him. Lisa rubbed her chin while she thought. Suddenly, she perked up as she remembered something. I heard from Luke that Star King is having an internal power struggle. Henry's stupid choices are risking the family standing at the agency. Emma excitedly latched on to this information. A power struggle means there will be a movement of shares. Lisa, go find out how the shares are split currently. You're interested in seizing Star King? Lisa asked. You did well this quarter, but buying out Star King's shares would be very tiring. I just want to understand where they're at. Where's your mind wandered off to? Emma looked at Lisa, shaking her head. Eric might have a use for it someday, although he might not need us to investigate it for him. Don't underestimate me. A lot of valuable information comes from small channels like me, Lisa reassured her. Afterward, she abandoned the sofa and left Tribeca, eager to put her strengths to good use. At ten the following morning, the drama that was adapted from the web novel Evil Child was holding its press release. The web novel that had accumulated a huge following online was being adapted into one of the most anticipated dramas of the year. It would be directed by a distinguished director, produced by Kaleidoscope's subsidiary company, and filled with many A-list actors. Eric's attendance at the press release was receiving as much attention as the author of the story. As a few of the actors and actresses came from Kaleidoscope, 
they couldn't avoid being questioned about Emma and Eric. They artfully dodged questions unrelated to the film or themselves for hours, calmly saying, we trust Mr. Roberts. Eventually, one obstinate reporter asked, and do you trust Emma as well? Before a reaction could be given, Eric exited the press release with a few of the film's important people. His footsteps were deliberately slower than usual, giving the reporters time to react and come to him. Meanwhile, the few people who were walking with him stood to one side and waited for him with stoic expressions. Mr. Roberts, can you answer the current hot topic question? Which hot topic question? Eric pushed for a direct question. The reporter realized Eric was going to answer his question and gathered his courage to ask. The, the question about the love triangle between yourself, Emma, and the heir of Star King. I'm afraid I can't give you an answer regarding this because it's not something I partake in, Eric said directly into the cameras. The reporter was stunned for a moment before realizing Eric's response was a form of clarification, so he took the opportunity to continue. In that case, how's Emma doing? What was her reaction when she found out about this matter? She's fine. As for her reaction, she didn't have much of one. She's not very familiar with Mr. Roy. Aside from the time he had protected Emma at the award ceremony, this was the first time he had talked about her publicly. The couple both avoided giving explanations, even when rumors of their relationships were spreading like wildfire, he hadn't mentioned a single word about her. And even at events like that day's, where the two seemed unable to leave each other's sides, he never mentioned her. But today, Eric finally said something. He wanted the world to know Emma and Henry were not together. That quiet clarification was enough to draw a clear line separating Emma and Henry. So you're saying Emma is completely unaffected? Why should she be affected by something that is unrelated to her? Eric replied. Then, what about the incident with Emma meeting Mr. Roy in France? The reporter shot back. For further information regarding whether they met, Kaleidoscope will release evidence this afternoon. After speaking, Eric instructed for security to clear the way as he left the scene. Although his response wasn't official, it was his clear answer as her manager. Consistent with his other actions, his interview was quickly trending online. People dissected his words, trying to find all the meaning. It had made very clear that Eric was re-stamping his claim on Emma. Is Emma really not involved? If she isn't, how did she end up meeting with someone? Why would she be dragged into this, they wondered. Overall, they were champing at the bit for the drama to finish unfolding. Since Eric has denied Emma and Henry's relationship, that must mean Henry lied, right? Someone wondered online. One of Henry's fans commented, Mr. Roy is rich and powerful, so why would he degrade himself by badmouthing some random model? More like she cheated and won't admit it. Hold on. Mr. Roberts said Kaleidoscope will be releasing evidence. I wonder what it'll be, another person interjected. I finally heard news about Emma from Mr. Roberts' own mouth. God, what a rare event. These two are way too low-key, a fan of theirs complained. When are they going to stop holding out on us? Are they together or not? Just sit and wait for Kaleidoscope's press conference. While discussions still bantered back and forth online, the focus had successfully moved away from Emma. Most people were certain Eric wouldn't lie and were more interested in the truth he was planning to reveal later. 
After the press release, he called Luis while en route to Kaleidoscope. Contact Star Kit and tell Henry to attend this afternoon's press conference. There will be consequences if he doesn't come. Sir, what about Emma? Is she coming as well? No need, Eric replied. I won't bother my wife with the presence of a man who disgusts her, he thought. Okay, I understand. Consider it handled. Afterward, Eric hung up the phone and called Luke next. Help me make a personal social media account. I need to use it this afternoon, Eric said. Luke was a little surprised. It seemed his boss was about to make a big move. He replied swiftly, I understand, sir. I'll have it ready before the press conference. Once the call ended, Luke wondered, he's never been interested in social media before, so what's he planning to announce? Or maybe it's a reveal. Episode 295 Good for Nothing But Trouble Patrick watched the news from his office chair at Star King. He sighed as he turned off the television and told his secretary over the intercom, Tell my son to come see me. I'm sorry, Mr. Roy, he isn't in the office, the secretary replied cautiously. Patrick pressed a hand to his chest subconsciously. He was so angry, he could hardly breathe. Send someone to find him immediately. Kaleidoscope has requested Henry appears at a press conference at 3 this afternoon. We can't let this piece of trash damage Star King anymore. Yes, Mr. Roy. The secretary was quick to contact Henry. However, he was completely indifferent toward the situation. Instead of preparing for the conference, he went sailing as planned and spent the day splashing around with as many models as he could, flaunting the life we had been born into. As the day inched on, he sat out at sea, drinking with his lousy group of friends. The rich kids raised their glasses and laughed. Kaleidoscope and your father are looking everywhere for you. He's going to kill you when you get back. One of them mentioned, plus, after this morning's press release of Evil Child, Mr. Roberts directly said that Emma isn't with you, meaning the poem has nothing to do with her. Another supposed friend snorted and exclaimed, Dude, don't tell me you're really trying to set up a model. How pathetic. Henry's face rapidly flashed from red to white and then white to green. Let's sail back, he said abruptly. Are you really planning to attend Kaleidoscope's press conference? Henry smashed his glass of champagne on the floor of the boat and whipped out his phone to order his assistant to post the photo that had been photoshopped from Emma kissing Eric to her kissing Henry. It was captioned, Was the love we shared fake? The Star King heir released another photo and admitted to being the man that Emma was kissing in the recently circulated photo, headlines declared. Fans and onlookers alike began gossiping over the news online. No way! Does this mean Emma had a secret affair with him from a long time ago? Does Mr. Roberts know of this? What kind of a show is this? Now that I look at it, the man in the photo does look like Henry, another person said. Because the original photo had been completely removed by Kaleidoscope's PR, the only photo circulating was the one Henry had photoshopped making the rumors now confirmed by Henry much easier for onlookers to believe. Can't wait to see how Kaleidoscope tries to recover from this, Henry thought with excitement. After returning from the seaside to Star King, Henry directly threw open the doors to his father's office. Patrick glared at him and said with a rumbling voice, I'm already old. How much longer do you want to clown around? 
You obviously know who will succeed, so must you insist on provoking Kaleidoscope? Do you truly think I'm always wrong? That I'll always fail? Henry asked. Over the years, apart from causing trouble and flirting with girls, what have you achieved? Have you made a single penny for Star King? You act like this, but do you know how many people want my position? Patrick implored his son with his eyes before saying gravely, I won't always be here to clean up after you. Henry was struck wide-eyed with shock by Patrick's words. Blinded by his pride, Henry yelled back, I'm determined to give Eric what's coming to him. Seeing his son couldn't be saved, Patrick pointed a shaky finger at the door and barked, Get out. Henry immediately obliged and turned around. But before he could leave, Patrick called out, if you don't want me to disown you, go fix the problem you caused. Kaleidoscope has asked for you to attend their conference at three this afternoon. Don't drag down Star King with you. At that, Henry finished storming out of the office. A million thoughts raced through his mind. What's the point of being rich if I can't even play around a little? Why is everyone so worked up over some measly model who slept around? Why would Eric destroy the relationship between our companies over her? He wondered. Screw it. I'll go to the conference, he decided. My father thinks I'm a good-for-nothing brat anyway. The scandal continued to escalate, and discussions became more heated. Eric simply wanted to draw a line between Emma and Henry. Yet Henry refused to let him do it. With only minutes to spare, Luis finished preparing for the press conference. Henry's new move had required him to gather even more counter-evidence. Underneath the stage, neat rows of reporters were seated. Their expressions were filled with excitement. Originally, they had thought Eric would have the final word. Yet Henry still persisted against him. While Eric insisted Emma and Henry weren't a couple without any evidence, Henry insisted they were in love, with plenty of evidence to support him. The reporters remained curious about what evidence Kaleidoscope could introduce that would determine the ultimate truth. It's almost 3 p.m., but Mr. Roy hasn't arrived. I doubt he'll even show up. Who knows? I heard someone ran into him taking some beauties out to sea. Luis watched the reporters chat amongst themselves with an impassive expression. He knew the press conference wasn't only going to be targeting Star King, but the reporters below the stage as well. Unfortunately, for the sake of preparing for this press conference, he had not had the time to even escort Caitlin to the airport. He let her leave on her own. Thinking about it made him feel like an incompetent boyfriend. Exactly at three, the press conference commenced. It seems like Henry truly had no intention of attending, but Luis didn't care. In his opinion, Henry's absence would only make the unfolding of upcoming revelations even more spectacular. He signaled for the hall to quiet down. The clicks of camera shutters echoed around the otherwise silent room. He scanned the audience, gave a slight bow, and began speaking. Firstly, I'd like to welcome our friends from the media. By now, you're probably sick of seeing me speaking at every Kaleidoscope press conference, big or small. However, I have no choice. Who told me to be so good-looking? The reporters laughed. Okay, let's get serious and on topic. Luis turned to the large projector screen behind him. But before he could begin, he was disrupted by a commotion at the doorway. How could you start without me? Henry called out, appearing wearing a black coat and blue glasses. Luis looked at Henry with a smirk. Welcome, Mr. Roy. What? Am I the only one brave enough to come? Where's my precious Emma and Mr. Robert? Henry raised his eyebrows provokingly. 
Louise straightened with a placating smile to the crowd and replied, Miss Miller said she's disgusted by the sight of you. As for our CEO, he doesn't have time to waste on a spoiled brat like you. As he spoke, his tone had dropped in friendliness until you was spat out with the contempt usually reserved for vermin. His anger wasn't exclusively on behalf of Emma and Eric. He held Henry responsible for preventing him from seeing Caitlin off at the airport. What did you say? Henry looked aghast, unused to people speaking to him like that. Don't throw a tantrum. You deserve worse for what you've done. That doesn't change the fact that Emma and I are in a relationship, he said smugly. Louise's eyes flickered away dismissively from Henry, and he pointed the remote toward the screen behind him. He would let the evidence do the speaking for him. Episode 296, Henry the Fake. The first thing that appeared on the screen was an enlarged version of the photo Henry had released in the afternoon. The man in the photo clearly looked a lot like him, with a similar figure and facial features, so the media were curious about what Luis was planning to say. Is he trying to clarify the truth, or is he implying that Emma and Henry are in a relationship? The reporters wondered. That's definitely Mr. Roy, one reporter commented. It is, isn't it? Another replied. What is Mr. Martin trying to do? A third reporter asked. Louise looked at the reporters. Can you see anything wrong with this picture? He asked, pausing to give them a chance to answer. No one replied. Neither can I. Now, let's look at the original photo. Another photo appeared on the screen next to the photo Henry had posted. The two photos looked almost identical. Let's compare the two photos carefully. The picture on the right came from Henry's social media account, and the left one is the photo from an anonymous poster that had been circulating before. Don't tell me you guys didn't notice that the height of the man is different in the two photos, Louis said as he led the audience through his reasoning. Our Emma is roughly five foot eight inches tall, and in the original photo, there's a height difference of about five inches between her and the man, he continued. In Mr. Roy's photo, the man is practically the same height as Emma. Look closely at the background. Doesn't it look like it's been edited? What does that prove? Henry sneered. Louise patiently continued to present his evidence. On the screen, another photo appeared. It was a screenshot of a message from the estate that the manor belonged in. This is a private estate, and to our knowledge, Henry doesn't own any property here. Emma took me there, Henry said in a huff. I'm sorry, but Emma doesn't have property there either, Louise replied. According to the estate's rules, only property owners are allowed to bring guests into the estate. The owner of the manor and the car in the photo will be here in a minute to clear everything up. Let's not waste any more time. I'm sure the conclusion is clear. He paused for a moment. Mr. Roy's photo has been professionally doctored. As soon as the words left his mouth, the reporters at the scene were in an uproar. Kaleidoscope's evidence was extremely conclusive, and there were plenty of media with photo editing knowledge present to confirm Louise's claim. Simply looking at Henry's photo on its own hadn't been enough to pick out the flaws. But when placed next to the original, it was clearly a fake. Okay. We've finally clarified the situation. 
Emma and Henry were never romantically involved. Now let's move on to the question of whether Emma is even familiar with Henry. Luis continued to lead the media as he presented another photo that Henry had posted. This photo that Mr. Roy posted has two coffee cups in it, as well as what appears to be Emma's back. Since Mr. Roy and Emma aren't even in the same picture, how could it possibly prove that they were on a date? Don't tell me you have evidence against this photo as well. Henry's expression darkened. When he'd asked someone to trail Emma, he'd specifically told him to avoid the bodyguard. Mr. Roy, even if I don't have evidence, do you think the people of Paris are blind? Luis couldn't help but laugh. Henry scowled. Kaleidoscope has connections everywhere and can pay anyone to say whatever they want. I feel like I'm the one that's blind. How could I have been interested in a slut like Emma? All I get in the end is Kaleidoscope messing with me. Luis shook his head. Your poor father. I can feel the pain he must feel having a disappointment of a son like you. He pressed a button on the remote in his hand and revealed a video on the screen. In the video, Emma had been alone from the moment she stepped out of the hotel, including when she'd strolled the streets, gone shopping, and drunk coffee. What date are you talking about? What a load of crap, Louise said, gesturing at the screen. Henry's mind went blank as he clenched his fist, breaking into a cold sweat. Luis had seen right through him. A spoiled heir like Henry only knew how to have fun. He didn't consider logic at all and hurt others to make himself feel better. I'll teach this brat a lesson on behalf of Eric, Emma, and even his own father, Luis thought with a smirk. I'm sure everyone can see that Emma was all alone from the moment she left the hotel, he said. She didn't go on any date or meet up with anyone. She was simply passing time as she waited for her flight back to New York. Now, you're all probably wondering where this video came from, he said as he called the hotel where Emma had stayed and allowed the manager to explain over speakerphone. On that day, Mr. Roberts had hired our bodyguards who had pinhole cameras attached to them in order to protect Miss Emma the manager said. The cameras don't intrude on our guests' privacy. They're merely used to monitor their surroundings, and all our hotel guests are aware of this. The cameras can also be customized to our guests' needs. Please, let me know if you need any more information in your case. After the call ended, Luis spread out his arms. I'm sure the truth is clear to see. Unfortunately, our Emma was slandered and insulted online because of Mr. Roy's recklessness. How could you be so heartless, Mr. Roy? Emma has no grudges with you, yet you did this to a woman. Do you bully women because you don't know how to interact with them otherwise, or because you think they're easy targets? Everyone knows that Emma is a private person, he continued. She knows she hasn't done anything wrong here, and yet Mr. Roy keeps pressing her. If you guys were in her place, how would you feel? The reporters below the stage looked down in shame. How has Emma offended you? Why is it that the media blows every little thing out of proportion to attack her? Henry loudly pushed his chair back and started to leave, but Luis held him back. Since the situation blew up so badly, Kaleidoscope has no intention to call a truce. The police want to see the person that maliciously spread these rumors. Mr. Roy, do you have anything to say for yourself as the heir to an entire agency who cowardly bullied a woman? Louise paused for a moment. On second thought, forget it. After all, you're a famous spoiled heir. 
Of course you do something this reckless. Kaleidoscope will seek Star King directly for responsibility. Henry turned and glared at him, but he was unfazed. Meanwhile, the media whispered and pointed at Henry. Everyone in New York was now aware that he was the type of man to bully women. To top it off, Luis's last sentence had completely trampled over his pride. If you're looking to cause trouble, you should come look for me, Henry said, trying his best to save face. Luis shook his head and looked at him provokingly. Why should I look for you? All you know how to do is bully women, you pathetic man. Everyone had finished the sentence in their minds. With the humiliation Henry had suffered in front of so many people, Star King's employees would have to walk around with their tails between their legs for a while. They'll be ashamed to show their faces in public thanks to him, Louise thought with a smirk. Episode 297 The Big Reveal Henry had clearly framed Emma. The almighty heir of Star King, the Roy family descendant who had loads of potential, had tried to frame a model. Worst of all, he had bullied a woman. Star King employees whispered gossip among themselves as news of Henry's despicable actions quickly spread. I feel so ashamed. Star King had been completely embarrassed by this spoiled heir. A real man wouldn't bully a woman like that. How did the chairman raise such a trashy son? If I were him, I would have put him up for adoption a long time ago to prevent him from dragging down the family name with him. If he's framing women now, what other disgusting things will he do in the future? It's not like a spoiled brat like him would care about others' feelings. As Patrick walked into Star King that day, he overheard the whisperings of his staff. Incensed, his face turned red, and he aggressively kicked open his office door. His secretary followed behind in fear. Chairman, would you like me to go look for Henry? She cautiously asked. He took a deep breath. Suddenly, he clutched his chest and dropped to the floor groaning in pain. His terrified secretary immediately called an ambulance and watched helplessly as the color slowly drained from his face. Emma's innocence had finally been proven, and her fans began to circulate the message she had left online when she'd recently made an appearance. An anonymous commenter naively asked the fans, why didn't Emma try to explain earlier? If our Emma had stepped out to explain, would you have believed her? Why is it that everyone makes up excuses for male celebrities, no matter what they do? But when it came to an innocent model like Emma, she had to suffer malicious speculation and insults from other women. The commenter was speechless and never replied. We've had enough. Emma has been defamed in every possible way. All that's missing is her being forced to kneel to these gossipers online. From now on, we'll protect her. That's right. From now on, we'll no longer allow her to get hurt. Her fan club created an international Emma Anti-Defamation Alliance and quickly attracted tens of thousands of fans who wanted to join. As they had experience dealing with the industry, the fans split up their workload and created a system. Some took charge of spotting defamation claims. Others researched information. And still others compiled a database of the achievements she had made since her debut. I can't believe that so many kind people out there want to protect me like that, Emma thought, as she saw what the Anti-Defamation Alliance had done for her. 
She gently smiled as she welled up with gratitude. Meanwhile, another big event had shaken up social media. The CEO of Kaleidoscope, everyone's favorite Mr. Robert, had created a personal social media account. In one evening, he'd gained more than 100,000 followers. This frighteningly large legion of curious fans he had attracted eagerly waited for him to reveal why he had created a social media account. At 8.15 that night, Eric finally posted something. A photo of him carrying Emma on his back, taken at Kaleidoscope celebration dinner. In the photo, Emma was piggybacking on him, her eyes twinkling in the light as she stared at him lovingly. His head was slightly turned as he looked at her with a gentle and caring gaze. Not only had he posted a photo, but also included six simple but powerful words. I am her one and only. It was a simple response to Henry's insults toward Emma, but it was enough to stir up the entire industry. God, am I dreaming? I'm not, right? It's Mr. Roberts actually revealing his relationship? I'm so excited I could die. I believe in true love again. I love this couple so much. I was the only one who could make the entertainment industry's big boss become her manager as well as her lover. You're amazing, girl. So this is Kaleidoscope's highest level of PR. Are we witnessing Mr. Roberts turning into an overprotective monster of a husband? I suddenly feel like the Star King heir is kind of a joke. It's so weird. These two people are on totally different levels of social standing, but they seem to perfectly suit each other. Although I really want to ask questions about LM's wedding ring commercial and the Talkmaster interview, after seeing this post, I suddenly feel like none of that matters. This explains everything. I want to dig up information about their daily love life. Don't anyone try and stop me. Emma, show yourself and say a few words. We want to see another picture of you guys together. Emma couldn't possibly satisfy all their requests. After all, she hadn't even found out what had happened. Lisa found a news article covering the big relationship reveal and then searched for Eric's social media account to confirm what the story had said was true. When she found his account, she felt like her brain would explode. She immediately called Emma on the phone. Emma! Emma! She said, nearly jumping for joy as she spoke. What is it? Emma asked, powerless against Lisa's extreme excitement. Eric revealed your relationship. Was this something you guys agreed on in advance? She was so emotional that her hands trembled. What do you mean? Emma replied pensively. Hold on a sec. After speaking, Lisa sent her a link to Eric's social media account. I'm totally shocked he went through with it. Emma stayed in the call as she clicked the link. After the main feed loaded, the first thing she saw was the photo of her and Eric. Most importantly, the time at which the post was made was 8.15 p.m. Eric is still at work because of this, she wondered. Emma, did you see it? He's basically telling the entire world that he's staking his claim on you, she laughed. We don't need to worry about another troublemaker like Henry making an appearance anymore. I can't believe it's finally been revealed. I'm going to go pop open a bottle of wine with Luke. After hearing this, Emma let out a laugh. I don't know why she's so excited whenever anything good happens to me, she thought. She's even more excited than I am. By the way, is Eric home? Lisa asked. Not yet, she replied. Why are you still sitting at home? Hurry up and go look for him. I'm going to hang up now. After putting down the phone, 
Emma grabbed her jacket and handbag and left. But when she reached Kaleidoscope and called Eric, she discovered that he wasn't in the office. I'm downstairs at Kaleidoscope. Where are you? she asked. I'm at the hospital, Eric replied in a dull tone. Old man Roy was admitted. Why are you there? Star King's people invited me, he said. It seems like his condition is serious and has something to do with all the drama at Star King. I'll be home later. You go home first and get some rest. Everything will be fine, right? she asked anxiously. There are so many people at Star King that could have visited Patrick if he needed support. Why would he specifically ask for Eric to be there? she wondered. Everything will be fine. I saw your revelation, Emma relaxed a little. I wanted to talk to you about it when you got home, but since I have you here on the phone, I want to tell you as soon as possible that I'm incredibly happy. Mrs. Roberts, I'm so glad to hear that. The entire reason I told everyone was to make you happy. I won't keep you any longer. I don't want to hold you up at a time like this. Come home soon. I'll be waiting for you. Although Emma spoke in a composed manner, she was filled with worry. Just what are Patrick and Star King planning to do with him? She wondered. Episode 298 Star King's Heir Patrick was seriously ill. After he'd been admitted to the hospital, he was quickly diagnosed with an aggressive gastric cancer. When he'd woken up in his hospital bed, the first thing Patrick had done was ask for his secretary to call his lawyer and invite Eric to see him. Star King's employees quickly heard the news as they piled into the hospital. Some told Patrick to take care of himself. Others requested for him to hand over his job. They'd had their eyes on it for a long time. Patrick's stomach began to hurt even more as his anger was triggered by the insensitive request. Seeing this, his secretary asked whether she should contact Henry. He shook his head weakly. I don't want him to see me like this, he thought. Inside the hospital room, a few shareholders tried to convince him to hand over his shares believing that would be better than giving the shares to Henry. He silently held on with all his life as his frail expression filled with stubbornness and resentment. If only I'd been a better father and taught Henry properly, maybe things would be different today, he thought with regret. Mr. Roy, for the company's sake, you should just nod your head and agree to handing over your authority, a shareholder said. If Henry inherits Star King, it'll quickly fall apart. I'm not dead yet, he replied in a raspy voice. We don't mean it that way. Soon after, Eric entered the hospital room, accompanied by bodyguards. When the shareholder saw him, they reacted cautiously. Mr. Roberts, why are you here? I invited Mr. Roberts here, Patrick said, signaling for his secretary to help him up and to bring the lawyer over. I built Star King from the ground up with my bare hands, he continued. I understand that I can't hand it over to my son because he's too incapable, but there's no way I'll hand it over to any of you. To protect Star King, I've decided to sell my shares to Eric. Star King will become part of Kaleidoscope. Before Eric could even sit down, Patrick swiftly grabbed the contract out of the lawyer's hands and handed it to him. 
I know you're the only person that can make Star King better. And I'm willing to use the lowest market price to sell all my shares to you. Are you interested? Pause for a moment. My only condition is that you can't fire anyone from Star King. Eric took the contract and flipped through a few of the pages. He sensed that Patrick was so protective towards Star King that he would rather give it to an outsider than leave it for his own people to destroy. What about your son? he asked. I haven't done anything wrong to him. He'll just need to walk his own path from now on. Patrick shook his head as he held back tears. He knew that even if he handed Star King to Henry, it would still have ended up in Eric's hands one day. I might as well hand it over now and save Henry the embarrassment of a future defeat, he thought, feeling relief wash over him. I'm a businessman. There's no way I would pass up an opportunity like this, Eric replied. Mr. Roberts, this isn't right. A Star King employee protested. I'm handing over my money, and old man Roy is giving me his shares in exchange. What's the problem? Is it because you all want to take over Star King yourselves? Did you think that I, the CEO of Kaleidoscope, wouldn't be able to control Star King? After feeling the full force of Eric's might, the shareholders wished that Henry would show up to stop the deal, but he was still hiding out on his boat with no intention of returning to the mainland. Mr. Robert, Star King is in your hands from now on, Patrick said. As long as you won't regret this decision, he replied. All Patrick wanted was for Eric to agree to take over Star King. He didn't care whether he would continue to run it as a modeling agency or turn it into something else. He knew that no matter what his decision was for the company, it would be for the better because Star King would be in good hands. It's too bad, he said. I'm worried about my son, but there's no way I can watch over him for the rest of his life. Eric didn't know how to respond. Because he was married, he could understand how Patrick felt, in a way. After all, he would become a father, too, someday. Take care, old man, he said. I'll leave Star King with you, Patrick said solemnly. Within a day, a few big events had happened within the entertainment industry. First was Kaleidoscope's chain of PR successes, followed by Eric's revelation, and finally, whispers in the industry rumored that Kaleidoscope was about to take over Star King. Star King's staff were in a panic about the news of Kaleidoscope's takeover. Patrick had asked his secretary to pass on the message that Eric had agreed to keep the company's existing structure and not fire anyone. Does this mean that Star King is really going to be taken over by Kaleidoscope? The employees wondered. News quickly spread to the spoiled air from his friends. As soon as Henry heard what had happened, he docked his boat and rushed to the hospital. As he arrived, Kaleidoscope and Star King were finalizing the contract with their lawyers. Henry's eyes were bloodshot with anger as he pounced toward the men, but he was stopped by Eric's bodyguards. Eric, if you want revenge, you should come after me. Leave Star King and my father alone, he said, gritting his teeth. If you were capable of taking over Star King, it wouldn't have needed an outsider like me to protect it, Eric said with a sneer. What have you ever even done for Star King over all these years? Henry breathed heavily as he clenched his fist. From now on, you are no longer the heir to Star King, Eric said. Henry looked at Patrick in disbelief as he handed the completely signed contract 
to Eric. Eric, I'm depending on you from now on. Patrick said. Father, would you really rather give Starking to an outsider than to me? Henry asked. Starking has a lot of people to support. Someone like you, who only knows how to eat, drink, and play, won't be able to properly support them. Patrick replied harshly. You reap what you sow, or so they say. Right now, I'm dealing with the consequences of failing as a father. I'm going to head out now. You two can continue to catch up. After receiving the contract, Eric turned to leave, when suddenly Henry pulled a military dagger, which he kept for protection, out of his pocket and pointed it towards Eric's waist. Everyone in the room watched the scene unfold in shock. Luckily, Eric reacted quickly and dodged just in time. His waist only suffered a slight scratch on the surface. Although there was blood, his injury wasn't serious. Watch it! Eric's bodyguard shouted as he quickly grabbed Henry. Patrick's emotions were stirred up by all the action, causing so much pain to his stomach that he fainted, while Henry collapsed to the ground screaming, I dare you to kill me. You think far too highly of yourself. Eric covered his wounded hip as he knelt in front of Henry. Without your father and Star King's protection, I wonder how you'll continue to survive in New York. After speaking, he slowly stood up, wincing slightly as the wound in his hip stung. Luke, who'd been watching the events unfold from across the room, noticed Eric holding onto his waist and ran up to him. Is it serious, Mr. Roberts? Do you need the hospital to look at it? He asked nervously. Don't let Emma find out, he replied with a slight grin. Luke looked at him awkwardly. I'm sorry, Mr. Roberts, but I already texted Miss Emma. She's on her way. I think it's best if you behave and go get your wound bandaged. Episode 299 a shady offer. Just the thought of Emma's overreaction whenever he had a flu or a migraine made Eric obediently agree to let the hospital check out the small wound Henry had given him. Regarding Henry, don't worry about calling the police, he said. Luke looked at the dazed Henry who was sitting on the floor and had no intention to step on him any further he hurried out of the room to find a doctor. Fortunately, Eric's wound was just a light external injury. All it had needed was a bandage, and he was good to go. But after hearing that he had been attacked, Emma frantically rushed to the hospital, ran out of the car without even disguising herself, and questioned the reception desk about his whereabouts. Eric knew her well, and had already been waiting on the first floor when she arrived. He asked Luke to bring it over. Was that Emma Miller? A nurse whispered. I think so. And the person talking to her appears to be Eric Roberts, another nurse replied. They noticed the couple standing near them, and secretly pulled out their phones to take pictures. Emma didn't have time to care about them. As her eyebrows furrowed with concern, she ran up to Eric and asked, Where are you hurt? My clothes are thick. He barely even scratched me, he replied. I still want to see it. In order to avoid the onlookers, he led her into a quiet hospital room, sat down on the bed, and removed his jacket. He then pulled up his business shirt. It's really just a minor injury. The left side of his waist was covered in bandages. Although a little bit of blood had seeped through, it was just a small cut. She breathed a sigh of relief 
before leaning over and helping him put his clothes back on. You know that scared the hell out of me, right? Everything's fine now. He reached out his hand and pulled her into his embrace as he comforted her. What exactly happened? He sat up straight. Just as he was about to explain the complicated situation, Luke knocked on the door. Mr. Roberts, Mr. Roy has just passed away. Eric immediately stood up, pulled open the door, and looked at him. It turns out that he not only had gastric cancer, but he also had a stroke, Luke said solemnly. He's an old friend of my Uncle John. Let's go up, pay our respects, Eric said to Emma. No matter how many grudges they may have held against each other, nothing was more important to him than respecting the dead. She nodded her head as she hurried to his side. The couple returned to Patrick's hospital room together. As they entered, the atmosphere was filled with grief. Even at that somber moment, Henry still wanted to run up and grab Eric's collar in rage. The bodyguards quickly held him back. Are you satisfied, Eric? He shouted, straining against the bodyguard's grasp. My father is dead. Aren't you happy? Emma looked at his fierce expression. She opened her eyes wide and asked, What is there for us to be happy about? Aren't you the one that wanted him dead? What are you talking about? Did you know that your father had gastric cancer? She questioned. If you didn't want him dead, then why did you mess around all day, flirting with girls and not doing any serious work? You obviously knew he had no one to assist him, yet you went around causing trouble, riling him up instead of being a responsible son. If you weren't trying to kill him, then why would you act like that? She shook her head and glared at him. Why do you think your father handed Star King to Eric? She asked. It's because he knew his son wouldn't be able to handle the responsibility of managing it. He didn't want all his hard work to be destroyed. Just you wait and see. Without your father behind you, who would even take another look at you? Her tone was harsh, but everything she'd said was the truth. Her words felt like silver needles stabbing into his heart one at a time. She was also incredibly angry that he had attacked Eric and felt no regret for what he had done. If Eric hadn't reacted so quickly, he may have ended up in a hospital bed too. Eric had no way to argue with Emma. He leaned against the hospital bed and took a few last glances at his father. Then he walked solemnly toward Eric. I'll take Star King back from your grubby hands, and I'll do it legitimately in front of everyone, he said, sneering. I'll wait for you. After speaking, Eric gently bowed his head towards Patrick's body and turned to leave with Emma. On the way home, he looked at her and was overwhelmed with the need to comfort her. I was supposed to give you a nice surprise today, but instead, I ended up scaring the crap out of you, he said as he rubbed her shoulders. Did you really buy Star King? she asked. I acquired the Roy family's share, so now I'm the biggest shareholder. He danced around the question but didn't deny that he had purchased the company. You own 15% as shared asset. You know I don't understand this stuff, she said with a shrug. But didn't Star King ban you before? This was one of the main reasons he had decided to acquire the shares. If he could wipe away one of her bad memories of him, it would be money well spent. She leaned against him trying hard not to use too much force. Even though his injury was small, 
she was still careful. In the suburbs, a few members of the Her Vision Studio staff hid inside a quiet house, hunched over their computers in the damp living room with concerned looks on their faces. After all the energy we wasted collecting information, Eric ended up being one step ahead of us by announcing his relationship with Emma first, one staff member said. With Henry's incident on top of that, the public's currently siding with Emma. We can't possibly release bad news about her right now. Even if we did, Kaleidoscope would immediately cover it up. Kyle, what should we do? Another asked. We already missed our chance. He announced they're in a relationship. That doesn't necessarily mean they're married, Kyle said as he waved his hand dismissively, stopping the others from saying another word. Who do you think Eric is? He's the CEO of Kaleidoscope. How long can he focus his interests on one person? So many male celebrities change women every few days. Eric's probably just like them. But how does that relate to us? He's just messing around with her for a few days. After he gets bored, he'll get rid of her. We just have to wait patiently. Who said we missed our chance? Kyle sighed. Take advantage of this time to chase another story. As the company had been constantly spending money with no income, it was currently operating under a loss. Following another story, what could possibly beat the story of Eric announcing his relationship with Emma? Staff members thought. While everyone was worried about Emma's story, a secret guest came to visit Kyle. The man knocked on the door to the house, and when Kyle answered, the man gestured for him to go to a car that was idling outside. He didn't know the man had managed to find him, and he couldn't get a good view of him inside the dark car. To his surprise, the man handed him a check. I know that you're the reporters that Luis was previously turning all of New York inside out to find. I need you to do me a favor. Kyle could just barely make out the numbers on the check in the dim lighting. His jaw dropped. What favor? I want to take over Kaleidoscope, and I hope you can help me. The reason is simple. Your trailing skills are impressive, and I know you won't betray me because of Eric. Episode 300, Eric's Secret Dream You want to take over Kaleidoscope? Kyle repeated in disbelief. Although I don't want to admit it, Eric is a very capable leader. No one can deny that. And with him around, the unfairness in the industry is under control. Without him, Kaleidoscope will be just another typical entertainment agency. The entertainment industry has always been focused on fame and fortune. Haven't you been trailing Emma for the purpose of fame? The man said, sharply pointing out Kyle's hidden desire. The entertainment industry I want is prosperous and competitive, unlike the industry Eric wants that just keeps everyone in their place, he continued. Do you really think he's just and fair? At least when it comes to Emma, he's no longer the same Eric. I need to think about it, Kyle said, handing the check back. If I'm going up against Eric, I'll need to pull out the big guns. Up to you, the man said, without a care. Just don't say I didn't warn you. After I take over Kaleidoscope, you'll no longer be able to survive in New York. Kyle wasn't stupid. He wasn't going to let a few words scare him into siding with a stranger. Regardless, it was still not the right time to deal with Emma. She'd already been labeled as Eric's woman. On top of that, Kaleidoscope had just settled some chaos and was on guard, 
ready to stop more attacks. As the car drove into Tribeca, it was already midnight. The couple silently entered their home. As soon as Emma turned on the light, Eric stretched out his arms around her as he whispered in her ear, Let me hug you like this for a bit. She didn't say anything. She just felt the weight on Eric's shoulders. A weight so heavy, it made her heart ache. Taking over Star King hadn't made her happy. It wasn't even something Eric had ever wanted. It's okay to show weakness in front of me. She patted his back. When you need me, I'll be your most stable and reliable shoulder to lean on. I can't believe old man Roy passed away totally alone, he said quietly, squeezing her tightly. It's a scary thought, but I keep thinking that if you hadn't appeared in my life, maybe in the end, I would have died all alone too. She felt his embrace tightening around her, so she removed his jacket and buried herself in his arms. Loneliness is a really scary thing, he said. You must be tired. Let's have a bath and then go get some rest. She turned on all the lights and then held onto his hand and led him to the bedroom. While she was filling up the bathtub, a question suddenly popped into her mind. She had always been aware of her own goals, and she dreamed of becoming an international supermodel. What about Eric's dream, she wondered. He'd never mentioned his goals to her. He spent every day helping others to get rich and famous, but he never stopped to think or do anything for himself. What are you thinking about? He asked as he entered the bathroom and saw her lost in thought. I was wondering whether becoming the CEO of Kaleidoscope was your dream, she replied. He removed his robe and stopped in his tracks. After stepping into the bathtub, he finally shook his head and softly said, No. Then what was your dream? Becoming a screenwriter. He laughed and then gestured at her to get in the tub. Come on. She smiled as she removed her robe, stepped into the bathtub, and then leaned against his chest. She checked his injury delicately removing the wet gauze and trailing her fingers around the small cut underneath. I'll help you rebandage it when we get out. Eric had achieved a dream that others had wanted for him, but no one knew what he truly wanted for himself. Emma's previous assumptions had been right. Stupid had something to do with him. Back when he explained the story to her, She'd sensed that his expression was different from when he talked about other things. I haven't thought to ask you before now, but have you decided on a female lead for stupid? Not yet, he replied with his eyes closed. I haven't found anyone who's a good fit. Oh, she replied gently, and then she dropped the topic. After waiting quite some time for him to say something, she suddenly said, I want to have a look at the script. He looked like he'd fallen asleep, so she assumed he hadn't heard her. But after the couple returned to the bedroom, he grabbed the script from the drawer and handed it to her. Have a look at it when you have some time. It's late now. Uh-huh, she nodded. By the way, can you give me your login details for your social media account? I want to go look at some of the comments. He pulled out his phone, logged in, and handed it to her. She had a quick browse on the phone before shutting it off and joining him in dreamland. The next morning, his social media account had once again exploded. Underneath his revelation post, Emma had left a message. She typed it using his account 
making him sound like he was talking to himself. But the fans quickly understood what was going on. The message was clearly written in her style. My shoes were way too tight and chafed my feet when I walked. So Mr. Robert said, hop on, I'll carry you. The fans were fed another juicy morsel of insight into their favorite new couple's lives. Witnessing such a wholesome interaction between the couple so early in the morning had lightened everyone's mood. I don't care what anyone says. I'm going to be infatuated with this couple for the rest of my life. Oh, look. Emma left the message at one in the morning. What were they doing together so late at night? To the commenter above, put your mind out of the gutter. A lot happened yesterday. Someone said they spotted them at the hospital. You can find photos online. Emma rushed to the hospital barefaced. It seemed Mr. Roberts was injured. What? Injured? Was it serious? I really want to know the latest news about them, but I haven't received any updates. This feeling is such torture. Eric's feed was filled with the excited cries of his adoring fans. When it came to his relationship with Emma, they gave their well wishes and supported it. According to fans, the couple's secretive relationship was different from the typical hype created by celebrity couples. With one glance, it was obvious that they were meant to last a lifetime. They were made for each other. Plenty of clues online had hinted that the two had been together for a time. But Emma had never used her relationship with Eric to help herself advance. They had refused to use each other for personal gain. And for many people, this confirmed that they were truly in love. Fans even questioned a few entertainment bloggers for their thoughts. And two replied, Within the industry, they have long been in a semi-announced state. Simply looking at Mr. Roberts, it's obvious that he's truly in love. As for Emma, she clearly loves Mr. Roberts deeply. They don't put on any acts and are exactly how they appear. I have high hopes for them. If you don't believe me, I hereby declare on this post that 10 years from now, they'll still be together and still as much in love. I hope you enjoyed the episodes. Thank you for listening. See you on the next episodes. Please don't forget to share, like, and subscribe.